This episode is brought to you by Kiko Socks. With a pair of Kikos, you'll have an experience that keeps you focused on your performance and not your feet. Use our coupon code POD15 for 15% off your order at KikoSocks.com. Welcome to Season 2 of Pod Practice, where Mama Bird alumni Quinn Finer, Mikey Lund, and myself, Alex Atkins, talk about Ultimate from the perspective of players and coaches. We want to engage with you, so please reach out. Say hi, ask a question, give some feedback. We look forward to talking with you. To reach out, follow us on Instagram or YouTube at podpractice underscore pod. Listen on Spotify at podpractice or email us at show at podpracticepod.com. I hope you enjoy this episode. Two eight. Two. There it is. Oh, oh yeah. wow, you're oh, no. like unrecognizable. Right. God. You're like unrecognizable in that photo, Mikey. <laughs> and also like that guy looks so chill making that catch. He does. <laughs> he is oh, just living on his face. He's living life and you are just you are just Oh like, yeah. It, it's it's like, not I'm a stoked. good moment for me. <laughs> I'm stoked. Wait, where is that? Is that that's San Diego? Sarasota. Is that Sarasota? No, that's Sarasota. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Two thousand seven nationals. Wow. Mikey is not stoked. We have uh, Ben Dameron joining us. Uh, ben, thanks for being here with us on a on a Monday evening. Um, before we get into to things, uh, how about you just give us the short recap of Ben Dameron in... Uh, and your life in ultimate, uh, yeah, your beginnings, etc. Um, excited, good to see you guys. Um, I know we haven't like spoken directly, but I know you guys well, and I listen to the pod, so excited thank you. To be on. Thank you. Um, yeah, like what you guys do. Uh, let's see. I uh, started playing when I was like twelve in Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta. Um, I went to Paideia starting in high school. Um, Played there for four years, um, and then I uh, went to UNC and played for Dark Side for my whole undergrad career. Um, and I'm still at UNC. I'm a graduate student now, um, so this is my fifth year on the team. And I started playing for Ring of Fire for club. Um, in 2021, so this is my after my sophomore year of college, and uh, I played. Uh, I guess I played. I played on the U20 team, um, but and they didn't just, actually play. Oh yeah, um, yeah. that was then, the same iteration as Danny and Aylin and mm -hmm. Artie from yeah. from from CU. Yeah, I would have really liked to play with them um but you know pandemic things happen um and then i played uh u24s this past cycle so that's all the ultimate playing experiences i can think of i think yeah. did your parents play my dad played uh summer league in atlanta when in like his 30s but um my mom never played and yeah no so are you i'm looking at your ultimate reference here and your uh, nationals appearances at any level are pretty. Uh, it's pretty gold over here. Are you undefeated in college? In uh, at nationals, like undefeated, like you've won every year you've played for Dark Side. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I I haven't won every game. <laughs> no, but, not every yeah, game, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but you've won the ones that matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the golden and then, boy. And then Ring is, you got a national championship with Ring. And a third and a and a six, which is still good. Which I'm it's I'm just I'm blown away. It's pretty incredible. And to hear that you're 2001 and you have all this, and I didn't even mention that you won YCCs in 2019. So uh, one, yeah, that's I like to get yeah people people give me the give me a little bit of crap for uh the co champ, but yeah, uh, was that the oh, year that got mm -hmm. the weather? Yeah, got rained yeah. out. Unlucky, but well, I will say that we beat uh. Buddha and pool play fifteen ten. So yeah, the, let that so de facto. Yeah. So do you feel responsible for all those UNC college <laughs> national championships? Like, is that Sir, certainly not? Certainly not. No. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, definitely not. Uh, I think like I am lucky enough to feel like I contributed every year that we won. Um, and I think that every person of every on like on a on a team that wins a championship, every single person on the team contributed to that win in some way. And I think For that's sure. something that Dark Side has um, shown to me. And you know, in in past. Like we won with, we won YCCs for AT aliens, and I think this the same thing is true. I don't think that I was a, as aware of it, um, but I think every member of every team that I, I've you know won a championship with played some integral role in um, whether that be on the field or off the field. I'm a big believer in like team buy-in, team culture, um, energy team energy on the sideline, um, you know, creating your own home field advantage. It's kind of like how I like to think about it. And um, I think that every member of a team is plays an integral role in doing that. Um, and if you can get full and complete buy-in where every single person on the team wants to contribute and is giving 100% in whatever way they can, um, good things happen. And, um, you know, on the field, I think that I've contributed um, – in diff- to di- to different degrees for every team that's won. So that's, that's really cool. nice of you to say. T- turns out <laughs> we, t- we turns out you are just another robot, another North Carolina <laughs> robot. <laughs> yeah. No, don't, don't don't put this don't put this label on me. I'm just from sorry, Atlanta, yeah, man. Most, from Atlanta, labeled. mostly joking. ATL we, till I die because we sounded like robots to kids earlier. But, yeah, um, right, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, no, yeah. a bit, but totally. I just like, regurgitate. Uh, <laughs> no, I, it, it is. We are it, team. We move as team. <laughs> team. Only. Everyone is good. Everyone. Um, everyone matters. We <laughs> all contribute. I mean, that's the, and I yeah. feel like that goes to like you know being that clone army that I just feel like you guys really represent from Star Wars. Like, just, <laughs> you know, like I think it's, I think that's a super good analogy, and fits even better that you guys are the dark side. So yeah, it's funny. I feel, I feel like people like, or at least like I'm not totally positive, but I do feel like people really associate our team with Star Wars. Like yeah. with like the dark side oh, or whatever, side, and that's yeah. just like not at all yeah. like what the origins no. of the team name are, and like not at all like what we think about. I think when when we think about our team, but maybe that's how people perceive us. I don't know. So who are like you in the lineage? Cool people. Who are you in the lineage of Sith lords? <laughs> like, are you? I feel like you're Kylo, right? Or Ky- yeah, the, it's like something Kylo. like that. Yeah, you might wow. be Kylo, if, but know. that would make Liam. Okay, because Denardis well, is I mean, Palpatine. Yeah. Is Denardis right. Palpatine or is Denardis, what's Nut? Is Nut and not then Nut? I think Nut's Vader. Oh, Nut. Darth Vader. Nut is Vader. But is Liam Nut's Vader? Because because Nut wasn't like the ch- like Anakin. We forgot about like the, Matt. That's what I'm saying. But Matt is here that. too. Okay. Okay. Who's but Dooku? Think about it. Yeah, that's a Shit. Nut. Nut's a Dooku. Nut's a Dooku. Sure. Because think about it. Liam was child prodigy. Anakin goes yep. to the dark side. UNC. Yeah. Yep. Yep, kills right. younglings. <laughs> Vader. Kill, yep, Vader. And then, I'll give Liam Vader. I yeah, mean, he, he gives me a Vader vibe anyway, so that actually works mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Nut could be. Is Duke. does Darth Maul work out? Could he be right Maul? Because that's bef- I think uh, we need to like. The I don't know Star Wars. We need, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. we need to dig into like the books. I'll take my Kylo. Maul was whatever. early. <laughs> Maul was early. So so. Maul so was I think early. Nut is really good there. That's yeah. really good. Nut could be mall. Yeah, yeah Nut Matt could be mall. And, and and think about it. Nuts like Nut dies and so but Dooku Nut gives dies me Dooku too. though. Yeah, I give Nut does Dooku. Give me way he, more he's got Dooku. the facial hair too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nut can have Dooku. Matt can have Darth Maul, and Liam can have Vader. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We've thought about this a lot. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> there's some holes there, but it's like eerily close. It's close. It's, mm, it's close. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where we're gonna go. <laughs> I actually, I, I of course cannot keep my mouth shut. Um, I and this will tie in, I think, to, yeah, to, to a lot of. Not talking, I know. Get I'm back sorry. to your corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, this will tie into, I think, to a lot of where we want to go um, with this interview. Um, but because you've played in so many big games from such a young age, um, I'm, I'm asking this because I actually. I was just talking to Noah Coolman yesterday at uh, the Mama Bird scrimmage the black versus gold scrimmage. 
Um, shout out Buck's team, black team that they, they conquered the gold team. Oh, love Buck. Um, yeah, I, I know you love Buck. Um, um, he doesn't though. True. True. He was sort of describing, we were talking about club nationals and, and mentioning like, he mentioned to me that it was sort of the experience was kind of new to him, even though he's older than you, Ben, um, by a few years, I think his freshman year was like 2018, maybe, or, um, no, I forget. Freshman. He, he was in that, he was on that 2018 Oregon team. He might've been a sophomore. Oh, Noah. Noah Kuhlman. Yeah. Kuhlman's my age. Okay. Kuhlman is so Kuhlman's definitely older than you. He's like four or five years older. I yeah. Think. Um, but he has, this was, this experience was new to him and he said, um, he could feel it. He could feel that it was, a, it was different. Um, that yeah. pressure, I, I don't know if he would say it got to him, but he could definitely tell that it was a different, or to him it felt different. Whereas even like uh, Kins and Quinn have now played in many semis. Um, ben, you've been playing though now for years and years at at, at your age. Uh, what are, are you 20? You're about to 22. turn 22. You're 22. I'm 22, yeah. Um, how, like when you go play club semis, does that feel different to you or do you think you, do you notice that you have a leg up because of those previous reps? Yeah, I, I've thought about this um, a little bit. I definitely think that playing as like a youth player in big games helps um, because it's not like a novel experience being late in a tournament and like being in a big game. I don't think that like changes the like you know the stage and if that makes sense like it's still really big you know it's it's a lot um you know to be on that stage but i do think it and it has forced me to think about different ways to cope with the pressure and to like you know figure out ways to channel that pressure because i do think that i'm i've been able to find a lot of success in, in bigger moments. Um, something that I like strive to do. Um, and I think like since YCC 2016, um, I've made at least semis with my team. And so, you know, those are like really big games, you know, U16, uh, 2016 was like the first championship game. And when I like started playing ultimate and realized like, Oh, like this is like, this is something that's like, you know, I, I could be nationally good at um, like, this is a really big stage. Like these are the best players in the country. Um, and coming to that realization when I was like 15, mm -hmm. um, I think it helps because that's not something that I'm like, you know, having to process in current games. Now um, I definitely think that I, in the same way that people like one, once I, once I got that experience and, like u16 i i just wanted it again like i was hooked at that point where like i want that pressure i want that adrenaline because like the adrenaline i'm sure like quinn and kins i'm sure you know like um it is just different when you get to be in a big game like that when you've when you think about all of the days and weeks that you've spent like preparing for that moment and you get the chance to be in that moment like it is just electric it is incredible um and, you know, I crave, I crave that moment. Um, and so I think just like all those cumulative experiences have, have allowed me to like kind of settle into a groove sometimes. Um, but, you know, still like sometimes the pressure gets to me and I'm like overwhelmed. Um, I, I think back to like times that I've been, the pressure was too much, like, um, like YCC, 2017 u17 i was like really in over my head i think i was just like way too amped up and uh also 2021 i was like losing my mind i was like i'm playing college nationals after like not playing frisbee for two years like mm -hmm. i was super hurt too um uh also like club uh was a huge change in pressure uh the the one where i was like most freaking out well i mean so in, in 2021 uh the national championship, I somehow got separation on JR uh, in, yeah. in, in, in the, in the end zone. 
um, and it was like four four. They were playing me. I had wo- like a, a half knee on my right knee, and like they throw it up. No, like dimes me up. I'm absolutely wide open, and like Jr. like is kind of making a play, but like isn't really it, making right? a play. And I just like completely doink it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And AD like saves my ass yeah, and like yeah, comes lays trailing. out behind me. I'm like yeah. my moment. Like I completely do it. <laughs> that like, was your I, moment. I have, your time I, to like, shine. Ugh, I'll shot, never live man. that down. I was, I was so embarrassing, and you know, I was like a rookie. Like I couldn't believe I was even on the field. Like, yeah, like I, I just felt like I totally botched it, and you know, I really, really, even after we won, like I, I really, I took that hard. Um, and then in 2022, when we played the World Club Final, mm-hmm. and it's, I, I feel like the big stadium games, like it is just like you, you see this like enormous, uh, just huge crowd like the amplitude of the crowd in stadiums is something that stands out to me like the amplitude in that stadium at worlds was just like i was like there's so many people watching me and like this is like the world final and like i couldn't like get that out of my head and i kind of like i think the pressure kind of got to me there um so then i've been thinking a lot about like ways to handle that and i do think that like when i'm when i'm in my zone and like I find that sort of like calm zone. I can like really handle the pressure and I I can perform really well. It's just about like preparing myself mentally to do that. And one thing that I've started to do in recent years that I think has really helped me, I started doing it in 2022 after that world's final with was um, just like, I'm constantly my teammates know, but like whenever I'm on the line in a big game, I'm like just, breathing in for four seconds and breathing out for six, um, like in and out, like over and over and over again, just trying to focus on the exhale specifically because it, it objectively, uh, calms the nervous system. Um, like exhale, exhaling calms the nervous system. I'm, I was like a, a psych major, but so that's like something I was thinking about and I've found that to be helping me a lot. Um, recently that was a long spiel, but, um, there's a lot of good stuff in there. And there was a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah. It, pressure, you know, overall is, you know, it's, it's cliche, but pressure is a privilege. And like, you know, I don't, I don't want to squander that opportunity um, because, you know, I've been lucky enough to get a lot of those opportunities, you know, because I have incredible teammates that allow me to be in those positions alongside them. But, um, you know, I don't want to squander those opportunities because I, like I said, like I crave that. I crave that. It's the best part about ultimate. In my opinion is finding the top um, level players that can push you to the absolute brink and, and, and trying to test your metal against the best, I think is, is one of the cool parts about Frisbee. It feels really <laughs> rewarding. Re- yeah. It is yeah, a privilege. Definitely ad- yeah. Definitely an addicting feeling for sure. Addicting. It, it totally can. Yeah, and it's always like that first – for me, it's always like that first appearance on the next level up is always the hardest because you just yeah. learn so many new things and then you start to settle down. Like it's that first year from high school up to college, first year from college up to club. Even like I felt like in the first ADL season just because it was different, you know, that you feel, yeah. you feel a little more pressure. Once you just get that experience, it's so much easier. And I think that goes to why, like, you guys have so much ex- success because you, all you guys on North Carolina have so much experience now at this point that you're usually playing a team that maybe it's their first time making it to that game and you guys have been in that moment, you know? Yeah, I was going to say already. that. I, yeah, that you make a good point. Like, we are lucky enough to get those multiple experiences. And I think, like, last year, this past year for Dark Side, I think that helped a lot because, um, you know, we didn't have Liam anymore. But we did have a lot of guys who'd been there before, you know, whether or not their role was the same, like they'd been on that stage a couple times. Yeah. Um, So that was super helpful. I think one thing that you mentioned about like the transition, one thing that sticks out to me about that is that, you know, I was always kind of intimidated by being on that stage against players who had been there before so many times, like, you know, role reversal, like, you know, that first college tournament, you know, they, or 2021, they like, they stick me on Quinn or they stick me on JR. And I'm like, this dude has like been playing college forever and like has been in this moment before. And I'm like, 
this no like you know I've, n- I've never i've never been here before um and then the same is true like in, in club you know you play pony they've got like nickel kotcher grant you know these dudes i've been watching forever you know yeah. obviously have been in every single world stage that you could possibly imagine and i'm like i'm gonna drop this in the end zone like <laughs> Like, yeah. Go um, well. On that note, I want to ask two questions. One, one about the pony game, but maybe first uh, to all of you: When you did first start playing club, did you guys did you ever feel starstruck? Did you ever look at players that you had been playing against for a long time and been like, "Holy shit! Like I have to guard this guy," or is it, or is it just fun? Um, maybe I'll I'll point the mic. Uh, how about towards Quinn first, and then we'll go. We'll go Kins and back to Ben. It's kind of like I've been hearing a lot of uh, in the NBA the welcome to the NBA moments. Yeah, a lot of those guys have podcasts, and they've been doing that a lot. Um, gosh, did you have a welcome to club moment? I'm trying to think of one. Kins, do you have one on top of your head? Yeah, my welcome to club moment go. was with Patrol in our first Colorado Cup. I guess in like 2019 and we were playing pony and we went up five, nothing on pony. And that's like, maybe it was 2018. Oh, you, so maybe it was the year they won. One, yeah. yeah. And we went up five, nothing on pony and just proceeded to like completely blow the game, but it was universe <laughs> point. And I think it was a, I can't remember if it, I think it was a D point, but I was on Mickle and Mickle was like my idol growing up. Like that's why pretty much I went to see you. So guarding Jimmy on a universe point was like the most holy fuck moment when you're like, you're just like in your head on the point. You're like, don't freak out. Like, don't think about what's going on. Like play Frisbee. And it's actually a lot easier when you're playing ultimate because you don't really have the time to think about it. But after you're like, wow, that was pretty fucking sick. And that's when you know, like, yeah, I can, I can play here for sure. Quinn, did you think of one? Dude, I'm drawing a blank right now. Ben, you got one? Quinn still needs a, a moment. He hasn't been welcomed. I still need one. Yet. I haven't made it yet. <laughs> Someone welcome Quinn to the <laughs> ultimate, please. Yeah, welcome him. Uh, I mean, the 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 JR drop was tough. I think more generally, like um, in regionals of 2021, um, John Stubbs gets switched on to me. Uh, we're like on the turn trying to attack. Um, we get like towards the end zone. And, um, you know, this is also like John Stubbs, like definitely one of my like biggest idols, Fris- you know, Paidea guy. Um, right, right. One of, one, of the, one of the dudes I've been watching for a really, really long time. He coached me when I was younger. Um, mm-hmm. And so he like gets switched on to me and I'm like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then like for the entirety of the point, he, like every move that I had used that I had like used previously to get open on like any other, you know, player, I was, I was like feeling pretty good at regionals, you know, cause you know, regionals and we finally play chain and then he absolutely clamps me like, like <laughs> not like nothing I can do every single move that I make, like where I'm like, oh, I'm getting open on this one for sure. He just like is step for step with me the entire way. Um, so it's not like a specific moment, but just like, yeah, he clammed me that that first point. He got switched on to me, and I was like, yeah, this is the real deal. Is it fair to say it's kind of, you're kind of similar to a young Stubbs in a lot of ways, like play style, I would say. Yeah, potentially. Um, you also definitely... kind of look similar too, because you kind of wear like the hats too. Like I feel. Like... I wonder if you are actually a Plus, little like, more it makes George. Sense than john so that's funny so. that you said that i was talking to john last regionals uh, or this past regionals and he said that uh my game reminds him a lot of george um mm. who is another person that i've like watched a lot yeah and you know i would say that the people that i watch on film sorry this is tangential but are are like if the, if they're not dark siders doing dark side things then i'm watching the individual skills and games of the the best paideia players so like Stubbs, Grant, Kotcher, uh, George, that sort of stuff. Dang. Pretty good players. Sorry, Quinn, go ahead. No, Pretty good yeah. I got I got one. Yeah. I got one. And it's funny that um, Ken's yours was about Jimmy because mine's about Jimmy too. Um, Does it to a lot of people. Yeah, this is my first club nationals, um, 2018, and we're playing Pony. And, of course, this is the year that they ended up winning. Um, but we're playing Pony. And for some godforsaken reason, Jim Shetler had me guarding Jimmy 
like obvious. Yeah, like well, I don't know what we were thinking, but I was like, okay, dude, like I'll do my best. Um, and I'm basically just giving him anything he wants because I can't. And at this point, Jimmy is like huge, super athletic, yeah. and massive. And I'm like, I'm Let's like 20 years junior, old, and I'm junior, like or sophomore, and, five yeah. ten, like you know me. <laughs> um, and he takes me deep, and he gets he's wide open, like so wide open. It doesn't go up for some reason. Um, and that he stops and I run past him and like let him go under. And as I turn around to go under with him, the sun was like beaming on the field towards us. And as I turn to go under with him, his entire body just <laughs> blocks the sun. And I'm just like looking up at him, like behind him. And he's just like catching a 40 yard under. And I'm like, I'm kind of close to this, but there's just no way I could get to this disc because he's just he's blocking the whole sun out. And he just <laughs> flap catches in, like throws a goal and walks off. And I'm just like, Jim, get me off of this guy. <laughs> um, we end hey, up boy. beating them in pool play. We beat them by two, I think, Wait, somehow. what year was that? 2018, the so year they won. won. <laughs> and we crazy. beat them in pool play. We end up missing the bracket entirely, I think. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was just, like, surreal again because, like, Jimmy, Bird, yeah. I, like, I still think he's probably my greatest player of all time-ish. Um, it's just crazy. When you You're guys from Colorado, won. right, Quinn? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Kins. I, no, I was going to ask, when you guys won, Ben, club, did you lose a pool play game? No. No. Um, yeah. I think we, they had the, we won all. The, you had the close one against Revolver. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. We, we won on Universe. Universe on D. On D. Yeah. Yeah. Tom I guess Doyle that's left becoming D. a little bit of Tom a Doyle won us the game. Yeah. Truck losing two. Bravo losing two. Ring almost losing, but then not. Then Pony had lost one. Pony so it's had kind lost. of interesting. Argentina. Pool play doesn't matter, man. It doesn't Pool matter. Plays. Pool play doesn't matter. Pool play is stupid. As long should as you make the bracket. Stop playing? Like, maybe, maybe that's kind of what I think. That well, was our problem at Nationals. We did too well in pool play. We had, <laughs> yeah, y'all peaked in pool play. Yeah. We should have gotten third. That well, was still a sick pool, like, <laughs> <laughs> so That's Boston definitely one of those. Yeah, like definitely could have won. Fuck. Definitely one of the best pools. I mean, that was camp. awesome. That's like one of the best days of Ultimate at Nationals to play all those teams in one day is pretty. Yeah, going going three zero in pool and then coming back, you're like, I got to buy. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that was feels good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it funny we, before the tournament. We were talking about how like I was talking about how like I almost want to play a pre quarter. Yeah, and I, th I I still stand Talking by that. I do. It. I do yeah. stand by that. And to preface, I had never gotten a buy to quarters before last national, so I'd always played a pre quarter. Um, I like it here. Yeah, that's what I was doing. I was like talking myself into it, but at the same time, like yeah, I think it is good to play that game and get like a a competitive game under your belt before like you're playing in quarters. Like quarters is pretty far in the tournament, obviously. Um, but then yeah, we woke up that morning and. We didn't have a pre-quarter, and I was like, this is fucking sick, dude. Like, <laughs> this is awesome. But I think it would – I don't know. It, the verdict's out. I like, going to, I like going yeah. to watch the other pre-quarter, too. Like, I like going to watch a revolver mm, and double wide play and standing on, on the sideline <laughs> and be like, yeah, that's right. I'm watching you play right now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Show me everything. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that – it, we may have actually even chatted about this, and we have an unreleased pod from last week that I'll get to, get to hopefully tonight. But uh, cool. As long as you do get pushed, I think you just need to get pushed early. I yeah, think that's important. That's like, I don't think it has to be the pre quarter round, but hopefully you have a challenging game before quarters, just so you can get used to the speed of the game of of what that those yeah. rounds are going to be like. Yeah, I, th I think that happened to to Pony in our game. Exactly. That's what that, we talked about. Yeah. Um, in fact, I guess that's a good segue. Um, um, I was going to talk about my coming to club, but they're not oh, as interesting. I want to hear about that. Next. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, no, we'll put a pin in the the bookmark no. thing or the in the um, pony pin, game. But uh, the back to the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me just go hide. Um, <laughs> like he's like our. Or like kid that we don't have the <laughs> yeah, world to I'm know the troll. That, that we just keep in the Nobody basement. Gives, actually, I am um, I am third quote unquote third podcaster um, on the uh, on the Reddit thread. 
<laughs> Wait, <laughs> really? Yeah. It's, it's, it's talking about Quinn, it's talking about Kins, and then, and also the third podcaster. <laughs> no way. Can I just Did say, say that? Whoever oh, commented so that, elevated. fuck oh. you. No, 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 no. Justice yeah, for no. Mikey, man. I'll say it um, for you, Mikey. Anyway, third podcasters name? coming to Club Moment. So I, I played a lot of mix when I was young. Um, so I've told the story where I didn't touch the disc at Nationals except for like a deflection. I never threw it one pass. Like I, it was a deflection that I caught for a goal. Um, so I wasn't, it wasn't even thrown to me. Um, but <laughs> when I transitioned to, to open, um, we were playing probably double wide when Brody was on the team and we were, we would always come down and we were coming down in ways or junk. So I was just running down on handlers and yeah. back then Brody and Kurt would start in the backfield and mm. little Mike, coming down to, to guard Big six Mike. four 210 yeah well i was a little mike at the time dog <laughs> um brody smith though that's kind of similar he was you know jimmy before jimmy so mm-hmm. yeah and i'm even uh i'm much 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 less athletic than quinn so <laughs> the idea of staying with one of those guys did not really make sense Let's well also i feel like moving. kurt and brody probably i mean quinn actually 20 2018 nickel i don't know but dude like, Curtin, Curtin, Brody were like, yeah, crazy. I athletes. would, I would say Jimmy was on par. It was on par, dude. Cool. He was crazy. That's so cool that you got to match up with him then. Wow. Yeah, uh, cool now, but not cool then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's we can we can save that combo for another time. I do have a lot of thoughts on athletic levels, but yeah, Jimmy, yeah. I can't even imagine, Mikey. That's that's crazy. You went down on them. <laughs> Well, that's let's not crazy. phrase it that way. But that's crazy. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. It's crazy that they oh, trusted Brody. you with that, Mike. <laughs> Damn. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Anyway. That's a, that's a great welcome to, <laughs> welcome yeah. to Club Nash. Oh, there's a, actually, <laughs> there's a, there's another good, good photo. I need to pull this up. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting his name. His, it's Max. He played for Double White for years and years. Um. Cannot think of his his last name right now, but he was maybe five seven. Um, and there's um, in my defense, I was not guarding him. I was I was a help defender that peeled off. But there's a great photo of him just skying for the disc, and his his offhand is is flinging behind him and just <laughs> slapping me in the face. Oh, and I'm just worst. like, yeah, that's I have like the, the, the most egregious looking, you know, oh, sad so face. Good. <laughs> anyway can we talk about the pony game a little bit yeah sure. yeah um some of the most electric us, yeah. ultimate i've ever watched yeah back to back pony ring truck dig was a phenomenal viewing experience for anyone at nationals at the field it was fucking like that's you incredible running, you were running back and forth like both games were super close and it was like really oh, hard man. which one to watch and you would run back yeah. and forth because they were right next to each other and you'd be like oh, oh, oh. did awesome. we end at the same time do you remember you um, were maybe five ten minutes ended, after yeah okay. which was hilarious because oh, they got to 15 yeah and it was so yeah. funny because yeah. everyone came over and was like it wasn't a strip and everyone's like also watching your game it was so oh god that was <laughs> that was good stuff I'm jealous. That's that. That does sound great. Um, yeah, it that game was crazy. I mean, I, I was I've been reminiscing about it a little bit with Kevin Pignoni, my one of my really good friends, and it's got to be a big like fan of, of his. The, He's a good player. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Kevin too. One of my favorite humans. Um, and uh, he and we were just talking about like how that was like you know one of the coolest, biggest games we've ever played in. Like. Uh, Noah saw like you know our our resident leader and 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 uh, you know Ring of Fire um, icon. He was talking about how like you know this this is like the game we want to play in. Um, you know, it reminded me so much of like the old. I don't know if you guys have seen the like Above and Beyond do- documentaries on YouTube. If you haven't, you should check them out. They're like these like specific documentaries of. Um, like 1999 and 2000 club nationals. Yeah, I think I have those DVDs actually. They're epic. Uh, and they're like 40 minutes long, certainly worth the watch. And like on those games, it's, the championship games are played and they're actually at the same, like the sports part, the surf part or whatever. Um, and like those games are just lined with people like all the way around the fields. Like it's just so quintessential ultimate to me. 
um, when I think about it, like it reminds me of YCC's, you know, like all the, all the players like coming and coming down to watch the, the final. Um, and you know, you just have it, sidelines are packed. Um, and that's like the, towards the tail end of the pony game. Like that's what it felt like. Um, or I guess that's like how it was. Um, and that I was just like, so like, you know, starstruck by the moment. Um, it was just so cool to be in that moment, um, and get the opportunity to, to play, trying to beat, you know, like one of your, uh, one of my like icons, Chris Karcher. Um, mm-hmm. and then, you know, like there's just a lot of like storylines that go into that, you know, like Jack and Ryan were on that yeah. team and uh, they left yeah. us and both the Saul um, brothers being in the Saul brothers, like Isaac apparently texted Noah, like the night before, like, I'm going to fucking end your season, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. Uh, and Noah, like Noah gave this like impassioned speech the night before about how like it's like this is the storybook you know way like how you know we're gonna go out and we're gonna we're gonna beat pony and you know gooch is just like well first we have to play furious george and and you know <laughs> but, but no is like we're gonna we're gonna go out we're gonna beat pony those guys that. are are ready That's so and, funny. Uh, you had to play a pre-quarter before that yeah <laughs> oh, uh, God, if so someone mad. did that on our team we'd it'd be just like the worst thing mutiny ever. yeah yeah fucking uh but you know, uh, we got to the game, and and I think what the the messaging was was just like I mean they hadn't really played anyone very competitively. Um, you know, they pretty much cakewalked through the pool from what I can remember, and we were just like you know we were just, we were talking about we weren't like obviously Pony was who we were playing, but we were focused a lot about our team and how we could play and and how we like, you know we wanted to play Ring Ultimate and how we wanted to you know, just believe in each other, just have faith in each other. Um, and really just attack that moment, you know, set the tone and, and, you know, take the game, you know, it's, you you can't like wait for the game to come to you. You can't try to like not lose. You got to try to win the game from the get go and kind of, you know, punch them in the mouth. And I think that's kind of like what we did, um, from the get go. I think we, we broke really early. Um, and I think that was like, we broke early and we were like, booing like crazy and like <laughs> you know we were like one, once we once that happened and like we had a couple of holds like we were like we're in this thing like i, I don't think ever like i personally was like i don't really know how this is gonna go like i don't yeah. know how good pony actually is like i've never Leave. played against any of these players i'd never played O for club so that was a super novel experience as well like i didn't know what the caliber of defenders were and like like they pony had like some of the best defenders I've what ever. Did you get? I got Jabron the entire Fuck. game, dude. It sucks. I <laughs> it's fucking awful. Fucking terrible. Uh, <laughs> like, I remember so bad. there was oh. one uh, that backhanded Durs throws to you like cross field. It was probably like a forty-ish yarder one. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, what what were you feeling that most? So Jabron's on you, right? He's you got you have position. It's definitely a hard catch. It's coming in edgy over your head. Yeah. You I have think to catch that, a trailing edge. So a couple things because I've thought about that a lot. Like I really wanted that one. Uh, I felt super bad about not reeling that in because Durs couldn't have thrown it better. He literally couldn't have thrown it better. Um, so when I was running it, it down, I didn't know how close. Jabron was to like making a play really because I was trying to watch the disc and so I was like am I gonna have to he's jump for this there, man. he's always like, there yeah I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't figure out if I was gonna have to jump or if I could just run it out because towards the end of it where I was like running it and I felt like I was like getting in pretty good position like I was then like oh shit like am I about to be out the sideline like I kind of need to jump oh wait no but like he doesn't have a play on it like maybe I don't need to jump and then I in my indecision which is kind of like what happened Constant. with that JR drop was I couldn't decide if I wanted to clap catch it or just like claw catch it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that indecision kind of just led me to like, I, the moment that I kind of like stuttered at the end was the moment that I was thinking about jumping and then didn't jump and then decided to keep running. And then it was just past my, my hands. Um, so that was really frustrating. Cause I there's through a perfect and I was able to get separation, more separation than I think in the moment I thought I had. Mm-hmm. Looking back, I had a decent amount. It's always that indecisiveness that makes it tough. Like I noticed that and that's what the pressure does, man. And like the pressure 
can yeah, especially cause like you to you, second guess. Especially like the pressure, I would even say more from like a defender, like you thinking so highly of him as a defender, you know? Like I totally. Like that can mm-hmm. usually cause the indecisiveness and take you out of your like – because when you're in your like cool, calm, like I'm a beast state, you're just going to be like, I see the disc. I'm going to go get it at like when I can highest point, And you're just like, you, get, you do it. Whereas like once you start second guessing, like, yeah, it's am I going to do two hands, one hand, no hand? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I yeah. I think, yeah. Go ahead, Quinn. I, you, you just described like every single time I've ever dropped a disc, like yeah, you just literally. you just took me through my own head. Like <laughs> every single time I drop a disc, it's like that exactly. Like every single time. Yeah, and I mean, credit to Gibran, like, I, I definitely think his pressure was what made me, like, I think nine times out of ten, I go and make a play on that disc, and, and yeah. you know, it was thrown so perfectly that that's a free catch, but, like, because Gibran was in my shorts the entire fucking game, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's to take half, I had just turned it over, like, the same point, I had hucked it to E-Blood when jr was on him and i just like i didn't throw it correctly and i was like kind of frazzled from that and i went down the other end and somehow um got it back um they like threw it up to babbitt and jacob positioned and i got to weasel my way on in there and get a hand in but um then i i think i was just like thinking too much about the moment and not thinking about like what was actually or thinking about too much about like the bigger picture and not thinking about like what, what was actually happening in that moment right and jabron had just been like in my shit like the entire game like he's just on my back pushing me like hitting me like i can't like you know i gotta do everything yeah. i can to even get like one under on him it's like super hard he's just I, faster and quicker than me follow up for for the group here is um you know quinn you mentioned um you may have got caught playing not to lose at nationals yeah. and yeah uh when you when we think about these types of plays against a defender like Gibran, um, because right, Durs like this is is what what is the calculus here? Should do we do we want to be the team that is taking that shot against this defender, or do you do you pump it and go for something higher percentage, knowing that maybe just throw away from that matchup? What what do you guys think? Give me Ben D all day, dude. I'm putting that up for sure. <laughs> So that that's what I, I'm kind of thinking. I'm not thinking about like as much if I'm throwing something as much of the matchup that it is as opposed to the person I'm throwing to. Mm-hmm. So like people in this room, like I'm throwing it no matter who's on them. Like in the in our semi, I threw not an amazing throw, but like I just gave Kins a chance against caught Goff, it. and it's like caught it's it. Goff, and Kins caught it. <laughs> so it wasn't a great throw, but like it's just like I saw Kins going. And I'm just like I'm throwing this. It's not. It's not like that. Golf's on him. Like I'm. Just, I'm throwing it. Yeah. No need to even acknowledge golf in that moment. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think like in that specific moment, Mikey like Durs was playing to win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I like, do. And he always is. I agree. Obviously, uh, one of my biggest role models. I think um, Durs is just a fucking gamer, and totally. uh, he. Uh, he was playing to win in that moment. Like he threw an absolutely perfect <clears throat> ball because he was like, I know I can execute right now and I'm going to win this, this game for my team. And he like should have. I just what? didn't execute. Yeah. Watching him become more of a hybrid and a thrower over the last couple of years has been pretty impressive because I've always thought like, like obviously he's a, a great goal scorer, but that was kind of what he did. And like watching him become a hybrid has been pretty impressive for sure. Yeah, I I can't say enough good things about Anders. I think he was like yeah. potentially our best player this year. Like, literally, no one on the in the division can guard him. Like, not remotely close. Like, not close. I, I mean, you can watch any game. If you only watch Anders, it is like yards and yards being churned, yards of separation every single time. Like, obviously, the end zone is just like a cherry on top. Like, mm-hmm. man does everything. He doesn't fuck up. He doesn't throw turns. I don't think he threw a turn at nationals. Like. I, I don't know. He, he's, he's that's true. Year. That's crazy. Well, yeah. we, are we giving that to Ben? Or are we giving it to? <laughs> There's. I don't know. It's oh, a turn now. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? Oh, that one? Yeah, give it to me for sure. Give it to me for sure. I'd take it. I mean, I deserve it. <laughs> that's funny. Um, oh, Kins, where where do you think we? Most of these these questions are. You know, well, one thing I had to say 
honestly, from what Ben was talking about earlier too, is just in these bigger moments. And I think kind of goes with what you were saying was for me. And I feel like one of the like most natural things is like you were talking about channeling uh, where the pressure goes. And sometimes it is so difficult to channel that emotion correctly. I feel like if I'm messing up in a big game, it's usually due to the fact that like I am so amped up, you know, and like there, there is definitely a way to use that emotion and adrenaline to your advantage but it's definitely one of the challenges harnessing all of that because it's super powerful but you've got to point it in the right direction and i think it's honestly totally usually just like something you have to learn with experience like you talked about breathing and i think like just all sorts of different ways to keep your mind engaged on the present uh in those moments and not get like too but like you know especially like in a moment where you like make a big play on someone, you know, like not getting too high is usually where I find it for myself. Like when you get in a big game and you make a big play, like figuring out how to play a full complete game is probably like one of the things you mostly see, like the veterans, the experienced guys. Cause like they know it's a long game. They know it's a long tournament and they're like, you know, we'll take it point by point. And like with the young, emotional, fiery players, like not getting too high, especially when you do something sick, it's probably one of the most difficult challenges I think in those big games. And I thought it was interesting that you said that cause it just makes sense. I think it's something you learn with experience, you know? Yeah. Like figuring out how to do that. So I thought that was really interesting. The other thing I wanted to ask you about was I realized you guys didn't really have a coach. So you had someone there calling lines, but you didn't have a coach. How did that work throughout the year and like at tournaments? Because that's Um, pretty interesting and unique, I would say, for like top level nationals teams. Yeah, um, it was it was interesting for sure. I think that. we are lucky enough to have, you know, Gooch, Saul, Ben Snell, Matt Rader came in, um, and that's a super experienced veteran guy. Noah Saul has an insane amount of experience. Um, you know, the especially the first three people that I mentioned, like those guys have like years and years and years of experience coaching and experience playing at a high level club. And, you know, I think that they're some of the best minds in frisbee right now um and so yeah despite like not having a coach like we had a lot of really good game plans and a lot of good messaging um going on in the huddle all the time due to um you know the 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 quad talents of of saul snell gooch and noah um just all kind of cooking for us um and i think like it would have been nice to have a coach just because like ha- the having to play your best on the field while also trying to like manage the team's strategy and like think critically, like in the moment, point to point, like what do we need to adjust? Like what are we going to run here? Like what's working? What's not like, you know, it's not like they're on the sideline being able to analyze it like that. Like they're literally on the field playing. Um, and so that's like, I think it was, it was definitely difficult, but you know, there's just so much collective experience between those people. And also those people are extremely respected and trusted people on our team. And so even though we didn't have a coach, there were, you know, it was just complete and utter buy-in from the entire roster that what they were saying was going to be what we needed to do. And I think Snell, Snell mentioned uh, in the in the post team, you know, like post tournament debrief that you know the whole team sits around and says their their final yeah. piece, and he was talking about how it stuck with me that it doesn't always it's not always about having the absolute best correct game plan. Sometimes it's really just about having a game plan that every single person on the team buys into and believes in. Um, and I think that that was what happened with ring this year um you know like to see a fellow teammate get up there and like he would snell uh gave a couple like pregame uh you know debris or or like you know game plans for the two teams the pony game specifically actually like 
we have just finished the furious game we go back and like get food and you know i'm like anxiously waiting in this like taco uh shop for like two hours like waiting for this pony game and then i get up get to the field and we're all like under this big um shade tent that um eric taylor's parents set up and snell's like hey everyone like gather around like we're gonna debrief the game plan for our quarterfinal against pony and we're like (laughs) okay and he like completely lays down this whole game plan that we had to beat pony and like you know intricate and like well thought out and like you know this is a fellow player you know that he's like completely bought in and like has done everything he can to like set us up to you know give us some idea of like what we can do against the squad and like he communicated it perfectly and everyone listened to it he didn't have to repeat it like and we literally just implemented his exact game plan on the first try against pony in the quarterfinal and it was i it was so cool to watch that d line do that you know o line you know o line's doing o line but to see that implementation of of the plan like in one game is it just speaks yeah. to to what gooch and snell and saw were yeah. able to do that feeling is 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 hard to describe it it really yeah. is um um i guess just a wonderful thing um you know, just finding the opportunities or or being lucky enough to have those opportunities where you're on the same page with 20 to 25 people. Um, <laughs> welcome Sorry, back, Ben. Plugging in my um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like banging your head on the desk. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, total, totally good. <laughs> this is um, what happened when Mikey comes out of his corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody just, everybody just starts uh, tuning out. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I, I just to, to to put a bow on that. Yeah, like the, finding those moments, like it really is the best, and 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 it doesn't always come in the final game, but when you do reach those pinnacles, I I, I find that to be the most addicting thing about team sports. Uh, because you just don't really, in real life, there aren't that many opportunities to be on the, that kind of, that same wavelength as that with that many people at once. Yeah. It's just a, it's a, a, a feeling that's just really hard to, to, to describe. Yeah, yeah it's like electric. Tr- yeah, true teamwork, definitely. And that's kind of how it felt in that pony game was like, you know, they take half on us and we're like, you know, should have taken half, obviously. Shout out Ben, um, but um, wait, what happened? We get oh, you dropped it. That was <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, okay. mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, no, but you know, we <laughs> we we come out of the huddle. We're like, you know, we're kind of like, just we were like so so just like in that moment for that whole first half. We were like, holy shit, we're hanging with them. Like, we can win this game. We can totally win this game. And we get in that huddle, and Noah's like we we have to believe like you have to believe in, the, in in what we can do you know it's gonna happen like this is a storybook like you have to know it you have to know that we're gonna win this game you know like look around like you see the fire and like the other people's eyes and like you know one one person that i love to to see fired up is trevor lynch like that is when that dude is locked in like you can tell and like that shit turns me up to no end like i love being t- trevor's teammate and you know I, I can say that about so many people on the team like you know, you look at it, you have those like little glances and those moments you're like, I, I fucking believe. And then Noah like goes in to break us down. And he's like, we're going to fucking win this shit on universe. And then he like breaks us down and then like, <laughs> we all know what happened. So I thought that was funny. That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. That looks so yeah. good if you win. <laughs> yeah. And he threw the fucking goal. Like Thank he's so, God. yeah, he's just yeah, yeah. so shit. badass. Like Noah's yeah. such a badass. It's That's, so cool. That is really tough. He, he threw the goal against Revolver and on Universe 2. Or Time did he catch too. it? Threw it. No, he, yeah, he caught it. He, he caught, caught it. it. Yeah, he caught it. Yeah. He got it. Yeah. From ET, E.T. to Noah. Um, you yep. mean in 2021? Yeah, 2021. Yeah. 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 Noah's such a badass. Uh, Ken, you know Trevor, right? You played former teammate, former yeah. teammate on on the trolls, YCC. And MYCCs, yeah, yeah. Um, the leadership triumvirate or quadrant, whatever it is. The uh, uh, do you think? Do you have an idea if if Saul and Saul Yannick and and Matt switched to D partially because they were 
being objective leaders or did that play a part? Do you have an idea? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I never really thought about it like that. Um, definitely possible. I think that the rationale was like, you have a young crop of upcoming yeah, players, even though th- they just were championship handler core two years ago. <laughs> yeah. I think the rationale was that we wanted to have a little bit more dynamism in the, in, on, on our O-line. Like even though Matt is like so good at everything, I think he, he tends to, to stay back a little bit more and, and, um, you know, distribute and like yeah, maintain possession, I think it's which fair I think to say is like he's more would, true handler. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that his thinking was that that would be super helpful on the D line. Um, you know, to just like because he would just drive on the turn. Like I don't know if you noticed, but like on the D line it was like mad every other sometimes, like or oftentimes, yeah. um, because the dude's unguardable and, and can throw breakthroughs like nothing. And um I think that though like the idea was to give us the experience and, and, you know, see what we could do and put us in that position and just kind of like, you know, in the same way that we were all in on like Snell's game plan. Like we kind of just like sent it with the O-line too. Like, even though we had a lot of dudes like that have never, never played O-line for club, like me, Rut, J-Mac. Um, uh, I would blood. assume. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So are those the guys making lines before, the tournament like the people like the players are the ones creating like the o lines and d lines yeah Go- gooch saw snell noah i mean the, they're they're the guys doing it all that's so interesting because i feel like once like when you're one of those players like it just adds a whole nother level to it of you know what i mean like a coach is making lines for everyone else like you're making a line that you're a part of which you have to be so yeah. self-aware you know, yeah, which I, I think is really that, yeah. good. Like, you, can, like, yeah, you can't know. Like, yeah, that's very interesting, and I think a lot, especially of people struggle with that. Yeah, especially as like players, like the the people you're describing could play both lines. Like, they could be very successful O line players, and they have been, or D line players. So, like, thinking about like if I was making lines for myself or for Kins, I'd be like, well, I'm gonna put us on the O line just because that's what we've been doing right like Mm -hmm. but for those guys it's like they could play both it's very crazy that they decided to put themselves on d which is and it worked i mean they were great so yeah those dudes are like we forget about how good they are at d after they played over the last two years like (laughs) holy shit man yeah they were d-line guys all the time too before shit man like Um, matt matt got so many poach blocks so so cool yeah he's a he's just a heady guy they're both heady guys um actually thinking about our lines and the successes and failures, I, I actually felt like we were most successful deciding what lines were when we solicited the most feedback from captains. Like we can f- try to 3d what our 40 chested all the, all day long as coaches. And we just get stuck in this circle of like, uh, really, I think a, a bad cycle where we start doubting people. It's like, well, they can't do this. Like, this is what they're good at and they're never going to be good at this. And, um, I think two things. The first thing is I really, really, truly believe that the people closest to the problem understand the problem the best. And that is always the players in the field. Um, and you, and it like, it is not a science. It's an art. And there's, there's some of it goes into like, how does it just feel like maybe you cannot describe why it feels better to run resets with nut than it is with such and such handler, you know, like, yeah. And, and, and we as coaches sometimes will like, just look at the numbers and just say, well, we're not as efficient with this, with this person. Um, but it it really doesn't matter. Like that, that feeling is so much more important. And I do think that's, I, Quinn, I'd be curious to hear your opinion, but I, I feel like that's one reason why our O finally, finally, finally started clicking at nationals. You know, we also, you didn't have canes for a lot of the season, so that could have been a factor as well. Um, regardless though, um, my point is players, um, as coaches, we, sh- we need to trust you guys. Yeah, I think, I think that's accurate. That was probably a big frustration I had with the 
the season this year is not having as much input on 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 lines as I have in the past and you know when I finally got the opportunity to do that and I was like pushing for Noah Coolman to play O-line since preseason of like Bravo or Summit or like I just want him on O for so long and we finally put him on O and it was just like he exploded like so good um so yeah. right now in front of everyone say i told you so i told you so <laughs> I, don't know, I, I already i already Bring i already told them one. i told you so um, well, we can we can pull up the history i was also campaigning for now. yeah he, like you guys do but well, yeah, everyone it is, knew it, it is the whole time we just never did it great I'm sure that's that's definitely what was going on let's clear that up yeah it is interesting like watching hey, i'm never play, wrong okay <laughs> watching someone play and then actually playing with them um and like you're saying it is kind of just a feeling like it's just like oh like this guy should be playing i'm gonna use an O example because i play O, and it's just like oh yeah i don't know why this guy's not playing O. like when i when i play with him it's just like yeah it, this is an o-line player to me um but maybe you don't get that when you're just watching so um yeah it can so be can I, ask, I guess yeah it can be very hard to articulate why someone should be on O or defense and yeah like, I, was, I was just in. yeah and the no, other thing too is ask, with like, lines uh, wait one thing ahead. the other thing with lines is just so easy to get in a rabbit hole because there are so oh, many dude. possibilities like i i'm sure many teams struggle with this but like there's like we're talking about the possibilities and like the perspectives you can take on why the line should be such and such instead of like this and that and like oh we want more throwers we want more athletes like you were saying more dynamic or like dynamo but maybe we want like less and like to not just get stuck in a continuous like seesaw of like going back and forth from perspectives must be like such a conscious struggle for all club teams yeah it's like especially with how talented they are yeah looking at players because when once you get in that loop you start to look at players for their weaknesses as opposed to looking at their strengths so like viewing viewing players for their strengths and putting them where their strengths are the best not where their weaknesses are the least is like super important and and something that we're like we kind of we kind of did with nut a little bit too um just being like like he's obviously a a fucking incredible thrower and we were just like and problem solver yeah we're just like why like let's look at him for that like that is an o-line player like he's an incredible like offensive mind and offensive thrower like i don't understand why he's not playing o and then we put him on o and and he did incredible so it was just like looking at them for their strengths and as opposed to trying to minimize weaknesses. Yeah. And, and we talk about it, like we mentioned it on the one where we talked with Dozer, but like knowing, having that feeling of like, Oh, this is the line we should stick with and let them work it out. Cause you have to let a line ultimately like gain chemistry and mm-hmm. get better. Yeah. But then you gotta, there's are times when it's like, no, this clearly isn't working. We need to make a switch. So having that feeling of like knowing when you want to make the switch, knowing when you should just let it ride and hopefully it's going to figure itself out. Fuck, that gives me like anxiety just thinking about it. Like that's like, <laughs> like the problem of the whole season. Like I kind of feel like I could go I could I could put myself back in this, that rabbit hole in an instant cuz oh, yeah. you know, second guessing myself. Had we put had we just had nut on O. Sorry, sorry to tangent us away from you Ben, but how did we put on no, no, how did we put I'm, I'm really on interested o? in this. <laughs> um, you know, from from day 1. Um there could have been more opportunities for us to figure out, okay, well, let's unlock, let's like give him the green light. Cause basically I don't think he, I don't know if he threw a single huck. He might've thrown a one, he threw 30 one yards, Kins. like a 30 he, yard one. It wasn't one like huck a huck. Oh, the one to me in the sheet. One to Kins. And it was just because the entire D line that ran down on us was my height. Yeah. <laughs> and like, Babies. you know, for the most part, I think that that is why he succeeded for us at nationals because he really bought into like a specific role gave a lot of those opportunities to tape to Connor Tabor Mm -hmm. and to Kins and to other folks. But had we had more time to figure it out, we would have been able to, okay, it it makes sense for it. This is the time we need you to take these shots. And we didn't have those, those, that time in the lab together. And an interesting yeah. wrinkle in that, though, was, like, you have the Summit and the Bravo season overlapping. And, like, oh. I think one thing that's hard is, like, 
not just being like, well, this is the way we did, we're doing it on summit. And so like, we're just going to carry that over for Bravo. Cause we had taken nut off of O for summit. And then that carried over to Bravo, but they are completely different game. They're completely different teams and they're completely different games. Honestly, like in a lot, it's of crazy ways. how different they are, to be honest. It, almost doesn't make sense how different the AUDL to club feels. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm. I, um, I have a lot of regrets with nut. Um, and I actually sent him kind of an apology text, um, before nationals, uh, just cause we did, we put, we put him in a lot of different situations this year. And, and I think that's tough for anybody. Um, and, you know, he and I had that we were on a road trip, an AUDL road trip, and we shared a hotel room together. And, you know, we had some god awful early flight. We had to be up by like, I don't know, four. Oh, 4 that was the one we lost something. the games too. We lost I don't, the I don't know if was it not the what, one we lost I can't the remember salt. for I think sure. It was. Well, anyway, we were this was us to go home and, and Nut and I we stayed up to like three in the morning just talking about Frisbee. And and I think this was actually a good road trip, but uh, Regardless, I had sort of outlined my vision for him for for Bravo and that it was going to be what he, the role he took on at Nationals. And then we really just we took the rug out from under him and did, did not give him that opportunity. And I think that probably made it you know even more frustrating for him. I don't think he would ever describe it as frustrating, but I you know at least to me. But I, I could only imagine like I, I really I I I appreciate the. People like honestly, like all of the all of you three on this call who who really think about frisbee, and Nut is one of those 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 people and who really understands like what the team dynamics need. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. Just if you're listening, Nut, I'm glad that we had you, and I'm glad that we found a a good role for you at nationals. And congrats on the beach gold. Those rabbit holes are dangerous though. Like God, like th these things can just be thought about over and over and over. And like, you just are it's so hard to know when to stop thinking about it and just like commit to the plan. I mean, I think that's why, like what you said earlier, Ben was like, it doesn't really matter what page, you know, as long as everyone's on the same page, but like getting to a point where someone can make that decision that everyone's going to buy into and like, look at the positive sides of it is like, I mean, that's what makes a team, you know, good. And like you were alluding to, and that's just so hard to find throughout the course of a season, because there are so many things like that people want to think about. And it's like, do we switch over this and this and what should we do on offense? And what about on defense? And like, there's all these questions that like so many people could think about, but like getting like, at least, especially as a player, like when you get to the point where you know what you're going to be doing, you lock in on that and you just start doing it over and over again. Like that is a super freeing feeling and someone who thinks about these things a lot like it can be i mean you just get exhausted sometimes like there's just times you, you it's like so hard to stop thinking about these things and it's refreshing to have someone who will make those decisions you're like fuck yeah i love that decision let's ride and you just move on from there yeah i i think that like kind of by, that you know ties into what we were talking about about like you know spot like setting a plan and having everyone buy into it is sometimes better than like finding the optimal plan Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, obviously it's even better when that plan is the optimal plan and you know, you, you hope that whatever the plan is, is also optimal, but you got to buy into something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, that kind of reminds me, Ken's like, I think for a lot of the ring regular season, like as particularly on O-line, it was a lot of like weird people were just like very critical of themselves. I, I don't know if that like comes from dark side culture where like people are just like never it feels like people are very like process growth oriented and and sometimes that can kind of like bite you in the ass when you're like focused so much on the nitty gritty and on like every little decision that like you don't just like take the time to like try and win and like try and believe that you can win um and i think that kind of happened to us at pro champs and and uh leading up to regionals like noah kind of called a, an o-line circle and he was like hey like we got to talk about this like we're we're not gelling in the way that we could be like we're we're thinking too much and we're pointing too many fingers and we're taking too much blame for little tiny things and what it ended up like ultimately we came to was just that like we need to just play and like try hard like it's it, it's easy i think when you 
like you're saying, can so like go down that rabbit hole where you're like thinking of all the different popular possibilities and, you know, like people think about the sport so much. And like you, you three are a great example of like people that th- think super critically about it. And at some point, like that can also lead to people forgetting that like when the rubber meets the road, like you just got to try your ass <laughs> off. Like yeah, you just got to try as hard as you can and play as hard as you can and try to meet that moment with whatever you have. And, um, you know, luckily, like what we had also was like supremely talented and a good composition because Gooch set it up from the very beginning and it was a fire plan. So shout out Gooch. Um, but, you know, leading up to the regionals, like we were really we, we had to like flip that switch. Like we got to go take it like we got to go try as hard as we can. And we got to stop thinking so much about the little mistakes and just trust each other. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, my 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 critical thinking days are behind me for sure. Like in any, in, <laughs> in anything, honestly, like I think I just got to transfer over that mindset to life. Like ultimate work, just anything. Like I just don't. I'm not gonna think about anything super critically, and like <laughs> flow with it. You know, flow in the. Way. I envy you. Grad school's not letting me do that like right a, now. Like a leaf. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you just gotta let go, dude. You know, like on that <laughs> That's plan. Like going into that big test, I think you know what you should be telling yourself is like no thinking. No. That's like funny. Studying, I have a, no thinking. Don't figure I have it out. A paper due tonight at midnight called Uh-oh. Critical Thinking Paper One. Right, <laughs> so, and all you need to write perfect. on that is and like I didn't critically think at all, it. so it works yeah. out. I would just write not doing it. Yep, appreciate that advice, yeah. Kins. Or that would be uh, like an interesting, you know, yeah, I mean, thesis like a, for the critical thinking thing. Is like, are you gonna are you gonna right. turn it in on time? Yeah, I asked for an extension, but I actually kind of I grinded it today, so I'm in a good position to just okay. submit it today. Let's go. Dude. If it was helpful for us to just record something for you right now, <laughs> yeah, I'll that. just submit that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was busy. I don't know what to tell you. That would be sick. You could just take the transcript from this pod, put it in the paper, That'd turn be sweet. it in. That'd be sweet. That'd be an interesting. Like, what grade would we get? It's pass fail. So, I I mean, I like our odds to pass. I'll be I like honest. Them too. I like if our you, odds to pass. If you're dropping the knowledge, you're dropping today, kids. The four I mean, of us. The four we're, of we're, us. We're setting ourselves up for a, a positive outcome. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was your most intense game at Nationals? Uh, the pony game. Yeah. Like what? Sure. Like, uh, like besides the – you talked about the crowd, I guess. Like, I mean, it was interesting. We did that little preview Nationals series and like – a constant theme in that was like, damn, it would be nice to beat Pony, huh? It'd be pretty cool to be the team that beat Pony. Uh, and you guys did that. Like, I don't know. Pony, I feel like, is such an interesting team because they're kind of like the bullies, right? Or is like, is that just me? Like, if they feels, that's what it feels like, right? They're like, I, the yeah. So and they broke know. for half. They break for half. And the thing that they were saying was like, oh, God what did you expect? Like, what did you, what were you expecting? And I was just like, Oh my God, like this is so classic. And I think that like the reason we came out so hot was because we were just like, we came out just fucking firing. Like we were talking shit. Like we were, you know, like we were, we were trying to match that because we knew that that was like how they like to play. And like, I mean, at least this is what I was thinking. I don't know. The sport, the sport, the sport's ruined, man. (laughs) It's yeah. I mean, I don't know, where did where did our where, where did where did we go wrong to the, to the kids out <laughs> what, there? What ha- what happened? <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, I think in that you know in that moment, I, it was just like so intense because like they they compete so hard and like they're so athletic and they're just like grinders and the, and they, um, you know, that air of confidence that they bring because you know sometimes I feel like it it toes the line of arrogance but i you know they're an intimidating team man like they're just like you know you, you look at their roster you look at their players they have like you know we're warming up before their game and every you know half their team has their shirts off and they're all just fucking shredded like you know dude you know, it's funny <laughs> i crushed After, over them <laughs> it's, it's you're just like oh my god don't like get, i have dude, to dude, dude don't get yeah. mikey going like, yeah I'm gonna, gonna, uh, he's gonna excited <laughs> just like lebron has got his shirt off and i'm like this dude's gonna guard me the whole fucking game like he has like an eight pack like i don't <laughs> this is the second time this is the second time this podcast that you've said something that we literally talked about in the podcast we <laughs> yeah. haven't released like to a T. Like we haven't really? released the podcast yet and you're just like you're spoilers. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, like 
there's that and it's funny like after the game we beat pony and liam like <laughs> you know because we were all aware of their you know ripped ripped bods and uh <laughs> And, and like Liam like takes off his shirt and he's like, this body beat them. Like, just like <laughs> oh this like mat God. of hair. Oh and like God, Liam was hurt the whole that. season. So he's like a little bit out of shape, I guess. But like, you know, obviously <laughs> fucking annihilating people still. Um, that that's so great. funny. That but that was so funny. Good, that is yeah. a great heckle. That is Holy so good. Shit, that is so good. <laughs> wow. But damn, those bodies are sexy. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So now we got Mike. He's just fucking moving over there. I'm sorry. We've got some. <laughs> we got to we gotta switch topics before we don't know where yeah, yeah. this will lead us. All right. <laughs> I think Quinn's got one for us. Yeah. So you talk. we're talking a lot about Jabron and just like hard matchups in general. Um, yeah. Maybe outside of – if Jabron's the hardest matchup that you've had, then that's fine. But is there other matchups that you like – pop in your mind that like wow that was that guy was good or that was really hard yeah that's a good question um yeah i was i was reflecting on it again to kevin uh or more more to rutledge because we were both we both played O for the first time in club we both played d last year and um you know like the best defenders are on club d lines who would have thunk it um and so you know drawing drawing really good matchups jabron i think was the best player yeah that defended me personally. I, I've mm-hmm. never, never um, been guarded by a, a player that good um, at defense. Um, yeah. But, you know, obviously there were so many other good players. Like um, I got, the, I got the Troy matchup, Troy Holland matchup mm-hmm. a lot. He's really good. Yeah, um, he's good. I don't think that he like denies me the disc in the way that Jabron does. Um, just cause like, I think that I am have comparable speed to Troy. Whereas like, Jabron, I'm like, even if I get a step on him or where he's out of position for a sec, he can just make up the ground like so quickly. Yeah. Um, Charlie McCutcheon um, is really, really like bulldog defender. Like he's just in your short. Like he he's the type of dude, like he's got the arm bar on your I was going to say, is he a good defender times. or does he just foul the he's shit out of you? He's just a fouler. Yeah, yeah. He just I, fouls the shit out of you. But it's like, you know, it, I, I know Charlie. I played with him 2022. So it's like, you know, and like I personally am just like never going to call foul, like almost never, unless like I feel like it's affected my ability to catch the disc like elsewhere, like on the, on the field, like I'm just not really calling foul. And maybe I should. Because I do feel like Dude. players are starting to like, you know, get super physical with me to try to like out position me or whatever. And I, it, it's like blatant, I guess like it is yeah. cheating, but I'm really curious I just, I just that. combat I'm, it with like, yeah. if you're going to like be up on me, yeah, like, I'm, like I'll probably push know. off of you. Yeah, like, you know, like, like that's the best. if that's going to be the situation, that's such a that. slippery slope though. Oh, yeah. It's like, I don't slope. want that to be the case like i don't i don't want to have to like think about can i push off him here like yeah i don't i'm not thinking about that to be fair like sometimes i'll watch no. myself on film and be like oh i i think that's like i pushed off there and um but it's it's definitely something i've been thinking about recently like mm-hmm. the club defenders are so physical like they're just up in your shorts and yeah um so like charlie charlie is I guess like probably fouls, but I still think he's like so quick and like no, just doesn't yeah. bite on anything. Like, um, so he was pretty hard oh. to guard or hard matchup for me. I'm trying to think who else we played. Well, uh, yeah, actually, can you talk a little bit? Oh, Cal Stoughton. Cal, Cal. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Cal Stoughton. Uh, I, th- I think, I think it's more just cause like we played U 24s together and he, he's, he's my homie. I, I love, I love Cal. Um, but he, like once once he was cemented as playing D line and I was cemented as playing O line, it was like every single rep I've got Cal Stoughton coming down on me. Mm-hmm. Every single rep. And so like, you know, he's obviously like quicker and faster than I am. And, you know, he's like so athletic and a smart defender. And I think he's just like figured out like my patterns. And so it I've got to. I got to figure out. I got to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to how to gain a little bit more separation. Yeah, because he's not, he, he gives me trouble. You guys he's got not as strong as Jabron, but he no. is probably more Com- athletic than the other two guys that you mentioned. Yes, for sure. Comparable speed and quickness to Jabron. Yeah, it's um, funny. Um, Cal. Uh, so Cal switched to D line for us late in the year, um, and. He like had never really guarded me. Like it had been so long. 
since he yeah. guarded me. And for the first couple of practices, he was doing the same thing, just like running down on me. And like for the first couple of practices, I was just cooking his ass, like yep. just getting basically whatever I wanted because he just yep. had no, like he just hadn't guarded me. He didn't know. Right. Um, and then like near the last couple two practices, like we were, we were like just like getting into it and he was starting to figure it out a little bit more. So I think it is definitely like he knows you after playing worlds with you. He's like, I know Those what he wants. Battles. Um, yeah. it, it makes it way different. And it's so funny well, listening to you talk. It's like we're like kindred spirits or something. It's very odd because we, we're getting the same matchups. You're talking the same way that I think about stuff. Like it's it's very very odd, and it's I <laughs> it's funny. It's fun to listen to you because it's just like you're speaking my brain like half the time, and it's it's very interesting. Yeah, it's cool. I I feel the same way I, when I watch your game. I, I feel similar to you, and it's cool when we get to talk about this stuff because yeah, I think you think similarly, and we play similarly. And you'll have to exchange notes. Yeah, later. wait, guys, this yeah, is yeah. really cute. <laughs> <laughs> we should yeah. clip in the like Casablanca like I think this is, yeah, I think dude. this is you know the like if you know the ending of that famous movie. It's like I think never this seen is going it, to, to be honest. Be, it was made in like the I don't even know prehistoric times. <laughs> prehistoric. No. Mikey Moody knows better, but it ends yeah. and it's like I think this is going to be the beginning of a long and good friendship or something like that. I miss. Wow, well, it was 1942, so it was very prehistoric. Classic. I'll be your friend, Quinn. Yeah, Classic. dude. I, we're already friends. We're friends. we're already friends. We I are. saw you at the airport when we were flying out from Nationals, right? Yep. Yep. I we nodded each other. That was that's like, nice. Yep. That's good. That's a good nod. Yeah. That's a good nod. <laughs> it's good to get that nod. You'd hate to not have a nod in that situation. A no nod is like a demoralizing situation. Yeah. yeah. We, we lock eyes like, and like, I do, just keep walking. Yeah. yeah. It's like, do we yeah, hate that each other? That would have been icy, man. Yeah. <laughs> do, we not, do we not like each other anymore? I had a nightmare about that a couple of nights ago. <laughs> um, I'm curious, Ben, if you have any perspective playing against Bravo's D-line. Not, not as an individual um, matchup versus Cal. Or maybe we had Artie on you some some as well, but do you? Spice? Cal. Was it not oh spice? yes, uh, pro champs. You put spice on me for a lot of the game, and then you. I think we decided at the end. Yeah, spice. Spice actually spice told us that, He's that like, you're too Ben's fast. Too fast for, for me. Yeah. Ben's too fast for me. Take yeah. me off him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't feel like the matchup at the, the moment. No, no, no disrespect to spice. Like that dude is incredible, yeah. and yeah. still was like reading my shit. I just, I, I think I did have the speed matchup. But sorry, you, go ahead, Mikey. You were cooking his ass for sure. <laughs> <laughs> man we got we got beat deep like for six goals that game um yeah the question question though like do you, from your perspective does bravo have a different d style than other teams Can well yeah i mean i i know for a fact because i t- i picked cal's brain about this for like i don't know it was Fucking some trader. night at 24 we he just talked about how like fm is the future or whatever, dude? It's so uh, good. What is Cal yeah. doing? I mean, dude? every every fucking Colorado player I talk to is like FM man. It's different, yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, I mean, it, it's different for sure because like every other team like doesn't just like exclusively run FM, and I I I don't think you all run FM like all the Not time, 100% but like of the time. a maybe lot do, of the time. Don't. Also, and you're FM's... and you're and you're a hella good at it to be to be to be fair. So it you know it's definitely disruptive. Um, and it, it also is interesting to think about like on the turn was one thing that we were thinking about was like, okay, on the turn, like, cause typically there were, there were, there were some games where we would run FM against like an, an opposing team's D line because mm-hmm. like it tends to give people trouble and we, we can switch into good matchups and, um, but against y'all, we were like, I don't know if FM is the move here. Cause you know, like y'all are so used to playing FM, um, yeah. So yeah, I definitely think that your team defense where, you know, just being in FM allows you to um, isolate people or, or, or put people in positions where the windows are smaller and put your defenders in positions where they can kind of like flash off of their person to kind of like disrupt. And it's, mm-hmm. it, it becomes uncomfortable. Like, I mean, in, in our pool play game, like we were definitely struggling with a lot of, like a lot of our success and failure was us just like being like okay we gotta like huck ourselves out of this like where's jacob fairfax um yeah, yeah you guys threw it you guys yeah, threw it deep like to him like to him. eight it's times <laughs> yeah i mean okay to be fair if it wasn't as windy as it was like he would have ran past y'all, y'all. <laughs> maybe not matthew ag actually that's definitely is... not jarv yeah. yeah if it Dude, had been windy that would have if it hadn't have been windy that would have definitely worked 
yeah um i don't know i don't know <laughs> to be honest y'all, y'all just played really well and we, if it we hadn't been struggling. windy ad couldn't have just fronted me by five yards either <laughs> exactly <laughs> I, it goes both ways man it goes if it both hadn't ways. been windy so Raj doesn't throw that deep <laughs> cramping kins is able to fucking okay I, I have a question i have a question yeah, yeah, yeah. uh what is like your ideal amount of win what do you, what do you think you guys is our I, like ideal amount of wind of it, is like literally the more as much wind as possible for you like for me like the more wind yeah. that is there the more i separate from like really throwers 100 percent because huh the, the, the more the, wind there has there to is, be a point of diminishing returns there, right? i'm trying to think of a tournament that we both I played mean, in there i'm just saying like in terms of like an enjoyable game, I would keep it like under ten miles per hour. Like I think a little slight mm-hmm. wind, you don't mind a little slight wind. It gives it like another little variable, like something to think about. But in terms of like performing better than other people, like <laughs> I think it's funny when there's those like we've had a couple practices where it's like ripping wind. Like we, I clearly remember one scrimmage where it was the windiest day in recent memory and it was my team versus nuts team and it was like which which team which like which person could like complete more passes in the wind because it was like so fucking hard to throw like it was one of those days that like completing an upwind pass you just was like the most fucking like difficult thing you've ever thought of yeah i think under under seven seven and under like like minimal wind for me like wind My game doesn't – we've talked about this, but my game doesn't transfer to win super well because, like, like I'm a good wind thrower. We'll figure it out. I'm a good wind thrower, but, like, big part of my game is being able to go deep and, like, get big chunks under. And mm-hmm. in the wind, like, teams are able to minimize me very well. Because, um, like – but for Ken's, like, of course, he's fucking 6'8", 120 six, pounds. Eight. Like, one <laughs> It's like he's coming down with floaty stuff. Like people aren't throwing me stuff upwind very much because they're like, well, right. look, he's like that little like that little shrimp dude is running deep. Like I'm not fucking throwing this up for him. Um, so I think like less wind is better for me. I would say like under seven. Um, like our our game against you guys like at nationals was a little too windy for my my taste, but probably that's like, like the, max, right? That's probably a max. Yeah, and yeah, for agreed. Like the. That's the so day of quarters, day of quarters was like I think like the perfect amount of wind. Um, totally, because it was like enough to show who can actually throw. Like when you see people catch it and they're like not super confident, and it's like a seven mile per hour wind. You're like that, that guy can't really throw. Um, but like when it's no wind, then everybody's just eating because it's like well. Yeah. Anybody can throw in this. I suppose that, like the type of wind as well, like the gusties, mm-hmm. like the ones that make it the disc kind of pop up and down. Those are annoying. Like even doesn't yeah. almost even if it's like two miles an hour, honestly. But if yeah. it's like a, a pretty steady, like predictable win, which is honestly probably pretty rare, but when you can use it to your advantage and you just you have good edge control, I think then I would probably say even higher. Yeah. Separates good throwers from great throwers. For sure. Yeah. True. The yeah. other thing is like crosswind versus up yeah. and downwind is such a big difference. Like Yeah. Cause those those Oof. in the in the uh, upwind downwind games like that is like a huge tactical piece, you know. That is, I don't like that. I mean, I, I think I don't. Is, nah, it's, it's it's like I don't I don't yeah. want to say that I like I know or dislike any of those things more than another because like you know I'm inevitably going to end up in those situations, you know. And so yeah. like if I I don't sure. I don't want to like lend myself towards one or the other, but you know I you, you can always like have a a favorite. Situation, yeah, well, it's I suppose. really interesting when like it's harder to score in one end zone than the other because it's like usually the yeah. downwind team is scoring and that upwind break, which is like normally just one point, feels like you know a point and a half. Back especially breaker. Well, you know what it really is is you get that upwind break and then you get that downwind break to cap it off. Like when those games are super interesting and like it happens less, you know, in club because the caliber of players are better, so the wind that is required to like force that type of game is higher, but. That, yeah. that that is so interesting i i do i mean i also would say i prefer like a crosswind just because it's more even of a game whereas like the upwind downwind games like you said like it can become that like you need to get the upwind and the downwind it's almost like becomes a two break thing it's 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 not as yeah. even and like free flowing almost as 
as a uh, the opposite. As long as Nationals yeah. is in San Diego, you, you can. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty fine. safe bet you're going to get a cr- crosswind. <laughs> it's inevitable. It's inevitable, right? Because of all the fields and how they. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and and but the stadium, I don't remember what the wind was like. Really, I want to say it was. It was cross. It, it was cross. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was like coming over the stands and a little bit down. Um, right. Which yeah. Is a tough wind. By the time we were playing in the semi, there was like essentially no wind. Yeah. I think that gave us some trouble. Like with truck, it's like once they yeah, can start throwing precise. those like blades and those little like elevator time on backhands, it's bullshit. like what are you I supposed mean, to do? I mean, like it's just. Rowan like, even mentioned this um, when he was on the LT World. The deep look pod. He mentioned yeah. that the wind, when the wind died, they were just like, "It's we're so comfortable now." Yeah, and we were thinking like, "Oh, the wind's down. Like now we can throw deep a little bit more." Um, but you know, like they, they, they have disciplined surgeons. defenders, and and yeah. for them, it's like, you know, they were they couldn't miss. I mean, they their players are so talented at throwing, especially on the flat side, and especially like when teams are like oh we are just gonna front these guys and then they punish you because their throwers are also insanely elite at throwing deep too Mm -hmm. i mean they're like this they're such an interesting like case study because you have like there's i feel like it's such a non-traditional style of like you guys even talk about you take saul and matt off to be a little more dynamo but like truck is like fully invested in the like pretty much we're all just like really good throwers and that's how we're going to do it because it's not like they're like you know taking the fucking ceiling off the place or like just like doing all this crazy shit but they are just so patient and like they always have so patient and they and the thing is when you have a throwers of those like with that much skill like they can always get out of the little like you know Mm -hmm. situation that they're in because you can always like put that little throw out to space like behind someone like get it off you know and at least you you might not even be in like a favorable offensive position but you still have the ball you know what i mean and they just have the right. ball and it's so hard to like take the ball away from them and that's yeah. why it's so interesting because so many teams like new york like i mean just like most teams i would say want to like have some athletes and like mix it up a little bit and they have the best you know offense over the, like probably consistently if you look at it over the past couple of years and i wonder if like you know more teams should be considering that like i think we went to a lot more thrower dominated line at nationals with like tape and nut and myself like more people that like have different (laughs) throws different different uh, what about (laughs) (laughs) different caliber for sure i mean i was thinking about it in terms of what did you just say Different caliber for sure. Like I was thinking about it, like in terms of like, in terms of like, uh, not taping myself because I I consider myself like a like a disc. He's just trolling, you know. I'm, I'm actually I think he does I, truly believe this. No, no. I'm not, no he I'm does not, truly I'm believe this. That, that's the all. issue. Is he hundred percent believes this? Even I though... I believe it to my <laughs> to my in my heart, man. Like what what is that? What is that? Really, really, Ben's hat say again. I trust you. I trust, I trust you. you. I, 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 do, I trust everyone, but like I trust I'm also, Kins. I'm also like real. Yeah, like you're not trusting me, Mikey. Like I'm just I. You I'm just think, kidding. You think in terms of like throwing ability, Quinn? You you match up with like a tape or like a nut? Um, I think on the flick side, I do. Right, but I, that's literally one throw. So like, okay. So do you match up with them? Yes, that's what I said. The <laughs> tape and nut. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, all right. We can talk about this. Moving on. We, we will talk about um, this later. <laughs> well, my point I'm, being, we, <laughs> no, you're done. You're done. We had more throwers on a line, and it was. And, give okay. me, give me some Quinn time here. Well, Quinn just I, got all fucking upset. I want to go. Sorry. I'm not upset. I'm not upset. I'm not upset. Um, does anybody watch The Incredibles? Has <laughs> is anybody a big Incredibles fan? Um, uh, yeah. I don't know if I've ever watched the second one, but it's the first. It's the first one, and it's really first early. One matters. It, it's yeah. It's the first one. It's really early. Um, and Bob, the dad, is is uh, he's sitting at his cubicle, and he's <laughs> take he's taking a complaint from this lady, and he goes, "I'm sorry, ma'am. I know you're upset." And that's just it's me and Kins right now. Um, 
Um, but I want to go back to Ben and I's bromance and our, our kindred spirits thing. Um, a more positive. Note. Yeah. And something, something that like, just since we're such similar players and like the, the hybrid, you know, ness of it all, since kids can't really talk about being a hybrid and all that. So, no idea. um, I'm curious, like what in like game to game, I, something I struggle with is, is realizing like what I should be doing in that game, um, uh, based on like what matchup I have or how windy it is or just, you know, whatever factors, like I think matchup goes into a lot, but, um, there's a ton of factors and I, I'm curious, like what you think about game to game and like how your role should evolve in that game. Um, and over like nationals, it's, it becomes really apparent too, because you're playing so many different incredibly high level teams that like game to game, like for me, my role changes so much and it's something that like really hinders me sometimes and um, something I struggle with. So curious kind of what, what you think about? That's a good question. It's hard to have a, like a concrete, like always correct answer. Yeah. Um, But I think that I, I don't think about it that much in terms of like what I should be doing. Um, Mm -hmm. I think more about like trying to get into a position where I feel confident and get in a position where like I'm, I I just, I need to like find success in any way to make myself like kind of like settle down and be like, okay, like you got this. And um, oftentimes the best way to find success in any way is to just take whatever the defense gives you. So um, like I typically am just reading my defender and, like seeing whatever they're giving me and I'll take it and then see like, you know, test like, okay, well, how, how easy was that? And then like, you know, or like, was that difficult? Or like, if it wasn't like, let me try like something else. And then, you know, I feel like it, the first couple points are certainly just kind of like, because I have confidence in different, you know, in all the different kind of areas of offense, mm-hmm. I am sort of trying, I'm, I'm analyzing my defender and seeing like, okay, what is something that I feel like I actually have a little bit of an advantage on, on this person? Or what is something that this person is failing to take away consistently? And then if they're failing to take something away consistently, I'm going to just like keep pounding on that. Yeah. Um, and then if, if that happens and they realize that they're either, they're giving me something over and over and over again, um, which is what happened in the pony game. We ran a, uh, horizontal stack middle diamond slash to me i think six times in a row and (laughs) um which is crazy um or maybe it happened in the truck game i don't know some game we like we ran the same pull play for the entire half and it worked every single time and it was like the most rudimentary pull play um that's crazy so it's like take take what the defense gives you if they're gonna give it to you like every single time like why why work for it yeah Yeah. you know there's an argument to be made like you can get more out of something. And I think that that's true. Like, like if I'm, if I'm winning something, if I'm winning like a five yard slash, like from the defense's perspective, like, cool, like that's fine. But I do think that like, even like little, you know, going from a center disc to like a slightly offset, like five yards down the field disc means that like the defender that was just like guarding his person on the pool play was positioned to guard his person relative to the person with the, relative to the centered disc. Yeah. And then once that's changed, like now he's out of position and you can just attack that. The other thing is that yeah. like, um, you know, once they start to take away the thing that you've been like taking all the time, that's when you can pounce and take the more greedy thing. And so at the end of the day, like offense just kind of has an advantage over defense as long as you're like being methodical. Yeah. Um, but against players like that apply a lot of pressure and everything, then it becomes difficult because then like the easy things feel hard. Yeah, I like that. I like that really a lot. Good. Uh, were you the main initiator? Did, did Liam do some? Um, did? I wouldn't say that I was the always the main initiator. I think we were kind of like would play it uh, on a read. I think Anders was in there. I would. Yeah. I was in there. Liam was in there. Eric was in there. Sometimes we run it for Fairfax because he's like you know un, you can't yeah. really front him. Um, I, I only asked because as, as I, I call a lot of our sets and and um. You know, I, I definitely, I don't think it's a secret that Quinn gets initiated to a lot. Um, <laughs> um, not yeah, always. Not some secrets out now. You really, yeah, it's you out. Really secrets out. Thanks, Kins, man. man. You got to get involved. <laughs> there are times, yeah, you know. He's a, he's a handler. He's too good of a thrower to put him in yeah, the Yeah, he's just too much spot, of a, so, a yeah. backfield warrior. I think one time is when I can um, put myself in a trap or try start overthinking things is when I'm like, well, we know that they're going to, put their best dude on Quinn. Yeah. So let's just take him out of the play. 
and decoy him. Um, but I think, you know, one thing, like if we did just continue to let Quinn figure it out over the course of the game, he, there's really, there's literally no defender on the planet that he's not going to be able to figure out, uh, you know, assuming that it's not 20 mile an hour wins and they front the shit out of him or play zone or something, but agreed. That's a good example of like what we were talking about earlier with the rabbit holes and yeah. thinking. So yeah, it's like, that's the thing. Like Noah Ooh. Saul was calling a lot of our pull plays. And I think like there were times earlier in the season where like we would try to like run these complicated ass pull plays. And then sometimes it was just like, all we needed to do was like run one of the tried line. and true, like, you know, isolate someone and, or like, you know, run a motion that, you know, is simple and, and, you know, predictable and the, that we've run hundreds and hundreds of times. And, you know, sometimes it just works. Like sometimes, like oftentimes defense is just like losing when you compare it to offense. So hard to play defense. Yeah. And having that, having that ability to feel like in those moments and not overthink and like be more of like a feeling person is truly a superpower. I think like the person who like doesn't necessarily have the ability to articulate it, but can just feel and like, you know, go with the rhythm of like the game and the tournament and the, like whatever the season it may be like, it's so difficult. And I think it speaks to like the importance of a good coach, you know, like someone who is not emotionally attached and able to make those decisions is crucial. Yep. Yep. Something you said there too, um, super underrated skill as a cutter is being predictable. Um, I was at a, I was at a bird practice a couple weeks ago and, um, everybody was so like worried about getting open and just like trying to make a bunch of moves and none of them were being like predictable. Like the ones that were being successful were just like, they were being predictable. It wasn't because they were more athletic or making better moves. They were just more predictable. Um, cause like you said, offense has a leg up. So if you were predictable and you make one hard move, like you're probably going to get the disc. Um, it's so yeah, funny. So- I, I've been, I'm not playing this fall season and, uh, I've been coaching a lot and that's something I've been talking a lot about to, uh, to like my younger cutters is, nice, ben. you know, it, you don't have to here. overthink this shit. Like, romance going. If Dude. your person's out of position, like punish that. Um, should we get married? easier said than done? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Devin Quinn. Will you, Sorry, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, actually, it's 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 interesting to hear you guys say that. Um, just because it's when you were saying it out loud, Quinn, I was like, "What?" As a defender, then I would know what you're doing. But it, right, yeah. if you do it hard, doesn't matter, man. Doesn't matter. Yeah, and lose. it's like you're the and you're the white pieces, like Ben was saying. Like you have the advantage. So if you're predictable and do the make the predictable move first, like a lot of the time you get to you know dictate. And if you do it well. Kins, that was a good analogy. I like that. I've never, I, I've never heard I, that. I liked that too. Oh, it took really? me a sec. Yeah, it took me a sec. Oh, yeah. Quinn and I both liked that, by the okay. way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Mikey Stop did it, but Quinn Yo, and We liked that, yeah. Chess. Chess. Quinn and I did. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, totally. That's funny. Um, since you you brief, briefly mentioned college here, and, and uh, we won't try to keep you too much longer, but... Uh, um, I'm having a blast, man. <laughs> we um, could do this for six hours, probably. Yeah, true. I know it's, 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 it's true. I'm, I'm, this let's is, this keep is fun, it guys. going. And then we would have to get married because oh, Devin would divorce yeah, me. Exactly. <laughs> this guy happened to know that Quinn is in <laughs> Devin's bedroom. So I don't yeah. know who Devin is, but <laughs> I'll get her out. out of here. I'll get her out of here. Watch <laughs> out, dude. Um, watch out. <laughs> watch out. I, we all clip that and send that to Devin. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but college season is obviously about to kick off here. Um, uh, Mama Bird is in fact going to CCC, which in which I, I assume you guys are on the list, right? Yeah, you yep. are. Yeah. So you won't be playing, but you, will you be there? Yeah, uh, I just I've been playing forever, like since uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. I, I can't even remember the last non-stop time. Non-stop um, since COVID for sure. Yeah, since COVID, I can't remember the last half. Off season, I had I was gonna not play last fall, but then U twenty four tryouts was happening. So, um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just taking the time off, um, trying to get build some strength and let my body take a rest. Um, but I I'm certainly present at every practice and trying to give feedback. We'll be at CCCs. Sorry, that was I didn't mean to tangent about and 
my I have off a, season. I have a tangent now too. You mentioned building strength. Mm-hmm. Curious what like what you do, what you do in the gym, off season, during the season, what you're looking like for running, stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um so like my first two years in college, I had really terrible patellar tendonitis in both knees and pretty much was like too injured to play for um two years. Um then found some incredible resources in the triangle. Um my PT Lori is um everything to me. She's like the reason I can play. Ultimate, same PT as Gooch. Um I have a problem with my hip where it's like tilted forward. Oh yeah. And um so that kind of causes just widespread imbalances across my body. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of what I'm doing is just PT all the time, every mm-hmm. single day, like every single day I'm doing my T my PT, my adjustments. Um, and if I'm playing in, in season, I'm pretty much like, I'm not really lifting outside of like, I do. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with knees over toes. Yep. I do. Yeah, I do yeah, some, I do a lot of his stuff. I do some foundation, like zero program mm-hmm. knees over toes stuff alongside my PT. I think that helps me a lot with, um, like explosiveness and um i bike a lot um i think biking is really good because it gets you outside it's good cardio and it's super low impact yeah yeah. like you can't really get hurt on a bike unless you like get in a crash yeah um but you know skill issue um, all right, all right, then, all right, all right. Relax there, dude. Definitely. Yeah, actually, I, I'm gonna I'm knock some wood right now, man. I, I, I've hurt myself. I've hurt myself on a bike before. We that okay. also is in the unreleased podcast. You're built differently. Like, talking yeah. about that. Sounds like you would yeah. like Boulder though, if you like uh, biking. Uh, yeah, I, I I I like Colorado a lot. It's one of my hey, favorite come states. on out, Ben. Um, Interesting, Matt. Imagine, I mean, Mikey, imagine don't be thirsty. If we played Gosh. together, Ben. Oh, I'm sorry. Mike, Wait, you you're gotta, telling me that you I can see you in, in person, Quinn? Yeah, dude. Um, More Mike, than just a nod cool. at the this airport. This is enticing, I'm sorry, man. This is enticing. <laughs> play it uh, cool. Certainly considering. Um, anyway. No one overreact. No, that's, yeah, that's, I, uh, that's awesome, bud. <laughs> hey, if you want to win, you can come here. <laughs> uh, we'll win with say? you. We'll win without you. Oh, I was swimming right, uh, far, my bro. senior I'm year. Sorry, too far. <laughs> go, go. Play it sorry, cool. Play swimming it is cool. I'm a fan of swimming. Um, swimming is I had sick. never swam before, and my second semester of my senior year, like there's a required PE credit, and I had never done it, and so never, I needed to, I needed to do it. Uh, and so I I did a swim conditioning PE credit, and it was super uh, super helpful. You had never been ones. in water before. Yeah, never been in water before. You're I never, just like, like you never. So but I, I got most improved. Fun fact: I won most improved in my PE credit with the eight oh, other freshmen I was with. Dog. <laughs> so, gas. Uh, so you doing uh you do Nordic hamstring curls at all, or is that? Dude, that's so funny you asked. I did them last night for the dude, first time. No How was way. it? It was. It felt like my hamstring was getting pulled off of the bone. How sore are you today from that? Feeling sore, dude. <laughs> it doesn't stop. I've been doing them for like two years now, and I'm the same soreness after every really? single time I do them. It's. I, I want to get into them. It seems like a really good thing to do because I've been seeing Tyree Kill do them, and I'm like, well, yeah, he's really fast. Dude, that's. I think that I, 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 I pretty much don't think of Tyree when I think. Of yeah, Tyreek. yeah, yeah. I pretty much only do like quad, calves, tibialis, um, glutes. And I like for whatever reason just don't train hamstrings, and I feel like my top end speed is like one of my more weak areas of my game. Um, like when I really get going, like Dude. I think Jabron oh, catches up, and and that's and a, Cal and that's our, a really scary thought. I'm gonna you're be a workout nerd. So in my think, opinion, yeah, go ahead. In my opinion, hamstrings are like the number one thing I work on in the gym, honestly. Hmm. Um, and pro- one of the highest on the totem pole for like speed and the really? fact that you're that fast and you don't like haven't been training your hamstrings directly is is scary <laughs> if, you, I, if you watch I, yeah we'll if see. you watch quinn run he is very much like a, a hamstring dominant like it looks like you're pulling yourself yeah, pulling forward myself where, like, interesting quad dominant runners if you look kind of like they're more pushy right. Yeah, I'm a quad dominant runner for sure. Like, I, I think um, it helps with like first step, but I'm not very fast. Like in a at top or, speed, you know. Yeah, so I'm. I'm. I think I'm going to start grinding hamstrings this this off season. Hell yeah! The yeah. knees over toes Quinny, program does have a lot of Nordics. I, I I did. Yeah, he preaches that, and I just yeah. never did it for yeah. whatever reason. I um, and I actually will disagree with Quinn that you do get. I got used to it. 
because uh, oh, one yeah. of the programs I forget which one, like the speed one. I think they've they've probably cycled since I I did the There's program. So many now. Yeah, but there was like three by five um, per week, or sorry, three by five two to three times a week. Um, no. We were just, I was just crushing them. Yes, I never. I've never done it more than like once a week. Like I'll do them once a week, especially in season. You got to be careful because you will. Like... Yeah. That's Oof. what uh, my good friend, Andrew Lee, uh, big, uh, big workout guy um, knows a lot. And he's like, yeah, once a week. Yeah. Nordics that's what once I, a week. I can't so do That's interesting. Like you're, I guess you're like, uh, I guess you're just an animal, man. You're I am not an explosive person though. I'm just like, a, I'm just like a strength. You're a gazelle. You should see <laughs> Mikey's legs, dude. Those things are like fucking tree yeah. trunks. I believe it. I'd like um. to see them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, you know, I, I was going to say my, my, <laughs> my 40th birthday is coming up, and I've been planning to do a little photo shoot to, to be proud of myself. So maybe maybe they'll be yeah, send them mind. this way, man. Hit up the New York guys, dude. I'm sure they could yeah. give you some tips. Uh, yeah. Conrad yeah. Schlor, man. Holy I shit! Would, I would def- shit. yeah, I would definitely get you some oil, Mikey. Like, oh yeah, please <laughs> come oil me up. Yeah, It'll be a I special th- episode. I think the I think it's not like I think it's more a question like how much oil and what kind, you know. <laughs> Some my birthday is actually a ccc weekend so i will not be there with oh. the birdies damn um i'll miss you man <laughs> well there'll be many more opportunities once you move to boulder so right right um i feel like um it now would be a decent time to either see if you have any questions for us or or mm-hmm. kins or quinn are there any last pieces on here that we want to yeah, there's one last thing I wanted to talk to Ben Ooh, about. We had talked finals. about it before the uh, pod was, and I've been thinking about it a lot lately. But I notice you, especially playing you and watching you, you're a pretty fiery player. Like, you definitely will let it out a little bit after you score. I kind of think of you like uh, you like to like ban the disc really fast and almost give like a little backwards like trot as you say like nah you can't guard me like I feel like that's like what I think about when I think about you scoring and it's just been a a, a hot topic lately so I wonder where you draw the line on overall just like I mean interacting with the opponent during the game talking shit taunting what your like definition of that even is and like where you draw the line of that in the sport and like what place you think it has in the sport. Um, yeah, just kind of your thoughts on that. I think are interesting. I like hearing different perspectives. Yeah. I think it's hard. Be- I mean, like you said, like there are different perspectives and that's like, that's like the thing it's, you know, some person might be more okay with, you know, one level of, of taunting or, or shit talk or, or, um, you know, just competitiveness. Um, and another person might just think that that has no place um, and there's no real like rule or expectation. I mean, I guess like ultimate tried to do that, but I think that it's a little bit problematic in the way that it tried to do it. Um, but I, I mean, I'm personally of the, of the opinion that like, you know, at least I feel like at the highest level, like you, you can like really get into it. And, and I think that there's no malice behind it. I do think I, I was listening to your last episode where you get kind of guys are kind of talking about it. and I resonated with like I think that there's a difference between you know like talking trash and 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 like doing it to like help your hype yourself up and like you know like oh they can't they can't guard me like you know like in terms of like positive self-talk you know that like can be a little bit directed to the other ones like I think I often will will delve into that a little bit where I'm like, they can't like telling my teammates, like they can't guard us. They can't guard us. Like, and I think like, as a, I think that, that, that hypes me up a lot, but like, you know, it becomes like crossing a line when people are like directly speaking at you, like, like insulting you, like, um, especially like not even about like the game, like just like insulting you and like trying to like make personal attacks. Like I think as I've moved on a little bit, like in, in, I've had more experiences like um, there have been more like personal things that have been said to me, like weird things that has been, have been said to me that like, I don't really care to like uh, talk about, but like, 
you know, it's like when you when you're stooping to that level to like gain a competitive advantage, it just shows to me that you're not actually that good. Um, yep. And I think that I'm personally like a big fan. Kins, you were kind of talking about like how that energy like it become like in especially in the big moments like becomes like really hard to channel and uh you know it's hard to like maintain confidence when you're like in those huge moments and i think that especially playing against players that you see as really talented and like are really pushing you and so like for me it's like i'm almost just like telling myself like they can't guard me they can't guard me to just like maintain that like momentum you know like that to maintain that energy that like and that confidence because i think that confidence for me is so key like i have i was talking to uh a couple people about this but like you know just, like not coming off as like fully like cocky but almost like trying to be cocky because like if i'm if i'm playing almost cocky like that confident then when an opportunity where like i could my confidence could dip presents itself then like my like i'm already so high that like it kind of drops me down a, like a little bit to where i'm not like as unconfident as i could be i guess I but i definitely know. like you know i don't want to like I think I've done a good job of becoming friends off the field, or at least like being like showing that I'm like, I feel like I'm a, a nice person off the field enough with like all of the like players that I end up matching up against to where like things that like I say on the field aren't like, you know, going to diminish the relationship that I have with people off the field. So um, you g generally would say when you, Whatever, not a you, however answer, you qualify. I <laughs> no, no. When it was a great answer. When when you qualify, like whatever, whatever you qualify as trash talk, it's generally to keep yourself fired up more so than to get in the heads of an opponent. At least for for you, I think so. Yeah, I, I think it really is about like also like showing to my teammates like we got this. Like yeah. like I I'm I'm locked in. Like I'm 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 gonna like go kick some ass right now, and yeah. like I want you to join me. Um, you know, that sort of thing. I feel like I'm, you know, it's, I don't think I've ever, I, I feel like the most personal trash talk that I'll say is like different matchup, like that guy's not in, you know, like something like that, you know, but never like saying like specifically who, or like, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to like, you know, I'm not trying to make it that personal, but I just you know, think I'd, that's so interesting though, because it's like, to me, it's like, even an indirect comment, like after you score, of like, nah, they can't fucking guard me. Like, you know, the dude walking away who you just scored on is hearing you yell, he can't yeah. guard me, right? So, yeah. like, I hear you, and like, yeah, it's yeah. not to his face, but at a certain point with me, I kind of feel like, like, whether or not you're indirect, you're directly or indirectly making that comment to someone, I feel like it right. just shows it's like you want it, like, it's that, like, you're talking about with the confidence, it's that line of, I'm the best. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm like, I can beat you and being humble enough to know like that you don't are going to do everything. And like there, you are not like all, you know, powerful, that kind of shit. And yeah. so it, but, but like, it does feel like when you're really balling out in those moments, in those games, you're very confident. And it's like, there is a part of it. That's like, I'm beating you. You know what I mean? Like that is almost like in, a sense of like what com com like you can't have competition if it's just yourself in a lot of ways you need that defender to be to like have that super competitive spirit yeah i it's interesting i feel like it, it also like kind of depends game to game like i feel like in in the pony game like i was kind of like overcompensating because i was like so intimidated by their team right, where it's like totally. i needed to tell myself they can't guard me every single point because otherwise i might not believe it um whereas like it was interesting in the truck game, like, and not to say that, like, I wasn't intimidated by the truck game, but, like, I felt like after those points, I was going up to Troy and being like, great D there. Like, and, it, yeah. and it, that was kind of, like, an interesting shift for me because I do feel like oftentimes in games, I'm, like, usually going for, like, the uber confidence thing. But for whatever reason, that semi, I was just in this, like, this flow state where, like, I, you know, every point I was, like, nice Detroit or, like, you know, like, going for it there was there were some points when i was like swaggering a little bit yeah but like trying to feel myself a little bit but it's it, really it, it's, weird what it's not consistent that. it's yeah, not consistent that's the other thing is like i i resonate with that because i don't necessarily know like you know we're so complicated as people like i don't necessarily know what drives me to when i'm like 
shit talking the other team to shit talk the other team and when the games where i'm like yo good job like you're playing good d like what drives me to be more yeah. of that player and it's like i like another question i ask myself is like how much control do i have over that like in the moment and like how much of it is just like the ride that i'm along in that given game and stuff you know because i it's just it's not something i'm thinking about going into the game i don't think going into the machine game that i'm gonna be like it's almost like i see the opportunity to like really just like fuck with people and like (laughs) i will say like i did think about booing you guys going into the ring game because that just seems like too obvious of a thing like not for me no but then you're doing what we want (laughs) but like what was so interesting about that is there were like so many people on your team who so clearly did not want that which i found super funny just because but i were you booing yeah and like oh i didn't hear you i'm sorry it's so funny because i actually was thinking about it and one of the people that i think it was the most affected by it was raider and that makes a lot of sense Mm. because he's not that he's ring. a sock guy. Lifer. He's not a ring guy. You know what I mean? Like he obviously <laughs> is, but he's not that guy who's been on ring and like has embraced the like booing culture yeah. of. Uh, I just I, I I did think that was funny, but yeah, more to the point of like, it is weird. Like you know, uh, what drives those things and like motivates people to do it. And I just think it's really interesting, like what the line should be, like where you define like taunting and like, and also like how much control the players have over that game to game is I think yeah a really I th- interesting I th- thing for me i think you make a good point about that where I, I think you mentioned this kind of in passing and i i kind of feel like this you can correct me if you're wrong you seem like someone who like kind of feels when they play rather than thinks um <laughs> yeah we've talked <laughs> we've talked correct? about this we've talked about this before because sure. I, I, I identify as that as well i don't think very much when i'm playing like i'm especially when i'm trying... at my best right know? Yes, when I'm, I'm in my thinking. flow state, when I'm in the zone, like I am not thinking at all. And I know, I I know other players like Saul Yannick. Shout out Saul. Um, <laughs> so I know funny. you're a listener. He, uh, I think he thinks a lot. Uh, Andrew Lee is <laughs> yeah. another person who, like, when he's playing, he's thinking all the time. Aiden Downey is another person who I've talked about this a lot with. He's like thinking all the time about, oh, I should do this here in this situation. I'm about to do this move, and then he does that move. And for me, I'm not thinking about that at all. And so I think that also applies to um it also applies to like the amount of like shit talk or or what i end up doing in any given point like when i score a point i have no idea how i'm going to react it's just like whatever happens happens and like i'm not like looking necessarily to to like you know limit or you know I, i i fall back on like hoping that like whatever my subconscious is 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 nice enough to not say something like super mean but like because i don't think anything like super mean about other people like i don't think that that will come out but i'm not i'm never like planning or thinking about what i'm gonna do when i when i score except for like maybe in the at easterns last year we (laughs) i like had the specific dance that i really wanted to do uh (laughs) And I was doing that a lot, but you know, other than that, it's like the other thing I was thinking, thinking about, about when you gave your response is like, you're like, yeah, I'll yell that they like can't guard me, but I won't yell it to like their face. But like me thinking about like if someone scored on me and yelled that, even if it wasn't to me, like I'm for sure taking that personally, right? Like I feel like I, that that I think is also yeah. Like a, like I you're think right. um, can I actually describe Kins your from my perspective is. When yeah, you, I would love to one, hear I think analysis. maybe one unique thing about uh, Kins as a, as a shit talker, as a trash talker, is um, I think the rest of us sort of hedge a little bit in terms of kind of caring, honestly, what the other person's going to think. Um, uh, tell, stop me if I'm if this is inaccurate, Kins, but um, but I I think that is kind of what makes you the ultimate shit talker in a way, and also why people love beating you so much is because like you really are who you like wait, I, I think I, of, wait and i mean I, this is a comp i mean this is a compliment because i most of us i think we want to present a certain way um but you are just like your true self in any setting and right. um so wait so i don't you're saying i don't care about this is people, funny i don't think you care you definitely don't care I think I think that 
my goal when in a game or shit talking is to be like Eminem at the end of Eight Mile. I don't know if I've used that <laughs> analogy already, but it's like I already am aware of everything that you could shit talk me about, and therefore, like nothing, <laughs> nothing you say to me is gonna be like, oh fuck, like now I'm. He like, pulled that out. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Like, unless you pull out, like, some shit I did in, like, kindergarten that I, like, didn't, wasn't, right. like, I haven't, like, fully wrapped my head around that I'm okay with. Like, there's not much that someone, I guess, would say that would, like, be, like, oh, damn. Yeah. This is, that's the this goal. is funny. Um, so, my friends, I think I got sent this, like, three times, and it was a, it was a screenshot of Reddit. Um, and I, n- I never go on Reddit or anything like that. So people will send me stuff every once in a while. But it was, um, God, I think Kins would be a pretty good player if he had the demeanor of Quinn Finer. And it was like just so funny. And then, then somebody yeah, under the it was comment like, under it. somebody under it was like something about like, <laughs> but what if it was how Quinn played with Quinn's demeanor? <laughs> no, the comment, the comment was like, "I'd love to have someone with Quinn's talent. I mean, Quinn's talent, but Quinn's demeanor." And then yeah, someone goes, yeah, was. Yeah, "Someone yeah, underneath yeah. it goes, I feel like someone with Quinn's talent and Quinn's demeanor would be pretty good too." Yeah. <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was me. That was was that you, Beth? Oh yeah, you were, you were coming to the defense. Of you. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I had I to just, stand up for my man. I will say too, and 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 I'm not like. I will say that I do see a lot of that. I would say like almost like passive aggressive. Um, not So it's not like shit talk because maybe it's not even verbal. Like maybe it's just in like the way. But I do see a lot of that uh, like stuff. And I think it's a part of the game. Like when you sky someone, yes. like you feel like you, when you're cocky, you feel like, yeah, I'm better than you. And so you may, you know, act that way for like the 30 seconds after you score. And that's fine. But like, I take that shit personally because I want to be the one that's better than you. And so like, but I take a very, a much more direct path than I think most people do. Yeah. I think a lot of people, like I love when I see like the really hard spike, like low key in your area and then like a high five. I'm like, I'm not high fiving you. If you just dunked on me and then you're going to like slow key, like spike it on me. And then come like walk over to like high five me. Like I'm not, I, I, I'm never about that. Like, especially in the moment, you know, I respect the person who's like scoring right. and spiking and all that, but I'm not like, I'm not about to like be like, oh yeah, that's cool what you did. And like, act like you didn't like, you know, try to like, you know, get one up. To me, it's just part of it. Like if someone's like talking their shit, if someone's like, you know, competing like that and they're talking shit to me, like I'm, I'm for it because I, you know, it's something I would do too. And like, you know, I know that at the end of the day, like they're just competing in the way that they want to compete. And like, all I want is competition. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for whatever that is. And I, I expect that my opponent will allow me to do the same, uh, assuming that I'm not crossing any lines and I don't think I'm going to cross any lines, but I think, th- I think you're right about like the passive aggressive thing. Like I, I, I don't uh, behind my intention, but behind saying like passive aggressive things is not like a jab at them because I'm a big believer in like believing in my own team and focusing my energy onto my own team. But it, you know, it's, it's, it's an energy that does both where I'm investing in my own team while also sliding the other team. So it's yeah. kind of like a double whammy, which is kind yeah. of the best. Yeah. But I, I don't know. You know what you're it's, doing. Like, you, I don't, no really way you don't know what you're fucking doing. Like I, I watch you and you score in those games and you know, you're fucking, <laughs> you're pissing someone off walking away from you and you're like, yeah, they can't fucking guard me. Can't fucking guard me. <laughs> They're paying attention to that. They're not paying attention to guarding me. I, in the context of sports, I don't think, it's passive aggressive though. Like in it, like maybe yeah. in the con- if that's like a, in the context of like other life things, like that would definitely be passive aggressive. But in the context of sports, I don't find yeah. it to be passive aggressive. Like it's sports. Like it's aggressive. aggressive. It's aggressive aggressive. Yeah, it's aggressive aggressive. Like that's what it is. Like yeah, it's, but there's definitely a difference between looking at someone and saying it, and then looking clear, at yeah, you know what clearly. I'm saying. Like so in. But some I don't sense- think that difference is passive aggressive versus aggressive. Um, yeah. I would- I have this thought in my head about why maybe I don't trash talk and Mm -hmm. I have two sort of competing theories right now. Um, the, what that I would like to think is true is that it's because I'm just really humble or that, you know, like the, I'm thinking of like Marvin Harrison, who maybe before your time, the old Colts receiver 
uh, who uh, played with Peyton Manning. Um, mm-hmm. He would always like catch the football. He'd catch a touchdown, hand, hand it to the ref. Like mm-hmm. I would like yeah. to think that's um, what's going through my head. But I also I actually think that it might be sort of a fear of failure because like I feel like if I put myself out there, then I'm, it's like a further fall. Like yeah, like totally. if I if I if I don't get if I don't be that guy consistently, yeah. if he skies me next, and like yeah, because right. if you talk and, shit, and so, you're putting yourself out there, right? And and I and when I think of it from that perspective, it's it's actually it is it's kind of cool to hear you guys talk about how competitive you are because you don't give a shit. You're just, you're out there to compete and to show, you know, your best, put your best up against someone else's best and who gives a shit otherwise. Yeah. And I just think the reason I think it's interesting is because it seems like a lot of people want to move or just like, there's definitely, you know, I guess in terms, if you just even look at the rules, like there's a belief out there that we're like you're trying to get rid of it from the game like in terms of we want we don't want taunting we don't want that kind of thing and i guess like one of the questions that that brings up to me is like is that even possible like knowing that people are different and like do like i do think there's like a yin and the yang of like yeah mikey there's a lot of like humble people out there that are gonna be a little more like that and maybe that's their superpower and there's a lot more like you know cocky confident people out there who maybe are gonna like you know do it a little differently and i wonder like the realistic chances of like removing it from a sense to the game of like playing a game that's ultra competitive and like not having those kind of exchanges whether it be verbal in any way like i honestly wonder whether or not that's a possibility yeah other sports definitely deal with this too you know i, I saw the josh uh, allen what josh allen got really yeah he got flagged in football yeah it made um, me think about it for for a while i think they were flagging end zone celebrations but realize that they shouldn't because it's yeah. just part of the game right right <clears throat> yeah um, it's tough especially because i think a lot of that one like for people that don't know like josh allen like pump faked a defender the defender bit super hard on it and as he josh was like jogging untouched into the end zone he's pointing at the defender and he got a flag for taunting in the nfl for that now. And I, I was actually thinking about this today and talking about it with some people. And I think like, that's, you know, and I think the thought process behind that is like, it's an obvious display of taunting. Like there's so much taunting that's going to go like just wide receivers, cornerbacks, you're lined up. You're like, yeah, dude, you guess what? I'm going to fucking lock you this point. Like whatever, like that stuff, you don't see it on TV, but when it's such an obvious display of it, like they mm-hmm. want to get rid of that, I suppose for the people. Yeah. Watch, I loved it. Like for the kids. I thought it was sick. Right. Like it's just like it, it, cause it's that balance, like, like of the like swagger, like Josh is like, I got you. And like, I know I got you and that's cool. But then there's also like, it's just such an interesting uh, thing for me. Recently. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, I mean, like I said, at the start, like everyone goes about it differently and like everyone interprets it differently and, you know, everyone has a different tolerance level to it you know like whereas like you know someone like you ken's is, is down for for whatever and you know <laughs> other people don't want you know any of it and um yeah i, I think it's just a, a continuum so that it's, it's hard to like rule on then and so then you know you would think that you know my mom was always talking about like well if one person out of the whole group doesn't like doesn't want to do what everyone wants to do then like you got to respect that and not do it and so you know, there is an argument to that where, you know, if you want to respect all people, then whoever's opinion is not being uh, honored, you, you know, wh- whoever, yeah. if it's going to be yes or no, if it's going to be a binary, mm-hmm. then like, and only one person wants no, then like, you have to like, concede and go with the no. And I'm not saying that that's a situation here. And I do feel like at, at, at like a, the club level, like, most people are, are like pretty down for whatever but it's interesting (laughs) for whatever. I don't know. Like, I just, I wonder if you were able to take like a poll or of something like, and get like a pretty coherent list, like where people would draw the line that they say, like, you know, I think you can, I think you can score on someone, not look at them and say this, but as soon as you like stare at someone or, you know, something like that, like where the line is drawn for people for like what they wouldn't want to see in a game would be so interesting to like find out. And I, I really love hearing all the different perspectives on it. 
Yeah, I'll have to. Maybe I'll I'll try actually putting a poll up. See if people. Yeah, like see what I, kind of engagement we get. We need some That'd like cool. examples almost of like you know, <laughs> like, and they keep they're like increasingly worse. Like last one is just like you mm. just like you're like people are like bringing weapons to the game. Like that's <laughs> where that your 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 line is like you can fight like after the game in the parking lot like post fucking. Like, is that your line, or is your line, like, somewhere way before that? <laughs> um, uh, all right. I am going to, uh, unless there are any final questions here from anybody, including you, Ben, I, I'll, maybe I'll share one photo for you guys um, the, of a previously, uh, an aforementioned photo. Um, but before I do that. The slap? <laughs> the slap, yeah. Um, um, there um, it is. Oh, oh wow! Oh, you're like, no. unrecog- my God, you're like unrecognizable in that photo, <laughs> and also like that guy looks so chill making that catch. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he has a grin on his face. He's living life, and you are just, you are just. Oh uh, like, yeah, it, it's he's not. Like, I'm stoked for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stoked. Wait, where is that? Is that that's San Diego? Sarasota. Or is that Sarasota? No, this is Sarasota. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. 2007 yeah, Nationals. Wow. Mikey is not stoked. Mikey is <laughs> not stoked. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll clip it in for the for the for any of the uh, viewers, not just the listeners. That's awesome. Alrighty. All right. Well, Ben, ben appreciate for, you doing this. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. That was a great pod. Yeah, I had so much fun, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, Quinn, any final thoughts? Nope. Love cool. you. <laughs> I want to be in on this too. And then Mikey, like you're, you're not part to of this, Mikey. Mikey. <laughs> Get out of here, Mikey. I'll go back to my hole. Honestly, Mikey, you've been so thirsty for Ben this whole episode, like trying to get him to come here. Like he's so clearly having a blof- blossoming relationship with Quinn. Like, oh, yeah, I Mikey's know. seeping with jealousy. I I'm a jealous person. I would feel bad, but all my energy's on Quinn right now. <laughs> all the focus. <laughs> all right, guys. Peace out. All right. See ya.